First up is Alyssa Belsky. Alyssa plays trumpet in the marching band and symphonic bands. She plays piano and jazz band, and she is the band historian. She has been in the band for six years, and she is escorted by her parents, Debbie and Tom Belsky. Next is Vinnie Candelora. Vinnie plays alto sax in marching and symphonic band, and has been in the band for five years. He is escorted by his parents, Diane and Tony Candelora. Stephanie Samino. Steph plays mellophone in the marching band, French horn in concert band, and she also plays the clarinet. She is the band vice president, and she has been in the band for five years. She is escorted by her parents, Jeff Samino and Cheryl Tucker. Richard Kaufman. Richie plays baritone in marching and symphonic bands, and he has been in the band for six years. He is escorted by his parents, Richard and Valerie Kaufman. Douglas Cole. Douglas plays alto saxophone in marching, symphonic, and jazz bands. He is the band president, and he has been in the band for four years. He is escorted by his parents, Joan and Bill Cole. Kelsey Dietz. Kelsey plays alto saxophone in marching, symphonic, and jazz bands, and she has been in the band for six years. She is escorted by her mother, Karen Dietz. Tara Demko. Tara plays clarinet in marching and symphonic bands, and she has been in the band for five years. She is escorted by her parents, Tom and Peggy Demko. Ashley Doherty. Ashley has been involved with Color Guard for three years, and she has been in the MCA band for one year. She is escorted by her parents, Jasmine Flame and Wally Milstead. Catherine Fest. Catherine is the drum major of the marching band. She plays clarinet and symphonic band, and she is the band treasurer. She is a former member of the Bloomsburg High School Band, and she has been in the MCA band for two years. She is escorted by her brother, Frederick C. Allen Jr. Catherine's father, Joseph Fest, and her mother, Diane Kessler Fest, could not be here this evening. Marissa Klinger. Marissa plays piccolo in marching band, flute in symphonic band, and she has been in the band for six years. She is escorted by her parents, Ken and Julie Klinger. Alexandra McLeod. Alex is a drum major of the marching band. She plays flute in symphonic band, and she is the band librarian. She has been in band for six years, and she is escorted by her mother, Tracy McLeod. Samantha Nevis. Samantha plays flute in marching band, oboe in symphonic band, and she has been in the band for five years. She is escorted by her parents, Stan and Christine Nevis. Kimberly Shakovich. Kim plays piccolo in marching band, flute in symphonic band, and she has been in the band for six years. She is escorted by her parents, Tim and Del Shakovich. Carissa Trent. Carissa is a member of the Color Guard. She is a two-year Color Guard captain, and she has been in the band for six years. She is escorted by her parents, Brian and Carrie Trent. Cassandra Troutman. Cassie plays alto sax in marching band, symphonic, and jazz bands, and she has been in the band for four years. She is escorted by her parents, Rod and John Troutman. Quentin Troutman. Quentin plays trumpet in marching and symphonic bands, and he has been in the band for five years. He is escorted by his parents, Mr. and Mrs. James Troutman. Robert Verano. Robert is a member of the trumpet section in marching and symphonic bands, and he has been in the band for five years. He is escorted by his parents, Rob and Lisa Verano. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have the band to present their 2012 show. This year's show begins with the Spanish-flavored Pictures of Spain. Next, the band continues with a medley from the Blues Brothers, which features the classic Soul Man and Gimme Some Lovin'. The show will then close, close with an exciting arrangement of the Beatles classic, I Saw Her Standing There. 
The band is led by field drum majors Alex McLeod and Catherine Fest. Color Guard captains are Carissa Trent and Kayla Witt. We would like to thank the MCA school board, administration, and especially the MCA band parents for their continued invaluable support. And now, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the 2012 edition of the Mount Carmel Area High School Big Red Band.
stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch with so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bumps bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mount Carmel Area High School Red Tornado Football. Week 10, final game of the 2012 regular season. And what a game it is, folks. Needs no introduction. It's the Cold Bucket game between these old arch rivals, the Red Tornadoes, and the Indians of Shimokan area. I am Warren Altimer along with Wayne Brokenshire, and of course. James Al Michaels, let's go tonight. <laughs> to bring you all the action from the Silver Bowl. Uh, again, you, you, you've read it, you know it. I mean, it, we don't have to talk about it. The only thing is, for the Indians, it's been 16 years since they've seen it. You know what they feel like. The Red Tornadoes, they want to hang on to it. Now, un uncharacteristically, they came into this game, the Red Tornadoes 5-4 and four on the season, and the Indians 2-7. and seven. Now, also, interestingly enough with those records, both teams, no matter what happens tonight, enter the playoffs. The Red Tornadoes will enter the, uh, the uh, District 4 2A playoffs uh, no matter what, and the Indians will enter the uh, 3A District 4 playoffs no matter what. Now, who they play is the home of the story. That'll shake itself out as the games are finishing up tonight. But tonight, the Red Tornadoes come in here. <coughs> Starting quarterback, uh, Wachaleski, number seven. For the Red Tornado, Zach will not play. He's not even suited, so you know you're not going to see him tonight. He had a wrist injury in the City's Grove game last week. So he's out. The freshman, Farinato, uh, will be playing as he did last week uh, for the Red Tornadoes. The Indians, as far as we know, coming in at full strength, or at least all the guys that we recognize. An interesting game, guys, in that this is fairly easy. The Indians come into the game scoring about 12 points a game. Their leading runner uh, will be the fullback Miller, under 40 yards in the entire season. Mm -hmm. So they're not a—I mean, I'm not—you know, there's not a prolific offense. I can't sugarcoat that. They're not exactly going to kill you on, on offense. Now on the other side, though, defensively, that's where they shine. Every game's been a, been a close game for the most part. They stay in the game, and it's because of that defense. They're going to play. If you looked at it straight on, you would say it's a 6-2. But because the two ends are actually linebackers on and off, it, it could be a 4-4, it could be a 6-2, depending on the lineup. Very active. Now, guys, what do we expect to see them do tonight with a freshman quarterback? <laughs> what we've seen all the time, history shows that Shimoka will blitz everybody and bring everybody, and that's all we expect tonight. We seen it last week, uh, again, Ceilings Grove. Ceilings Grove was laid back a little bit when Wasileski was in, but as soon as uh, uh, Farinato came in as the uh, backup quarterback, they just released all five linebackers and, and the rush was on. I would assume after looking at uh, some film during the week, that's going to happen tonight also. And and we've known the history of Shimokin is a very aggressive defense. Right. Very Not much quick different all the time. Right. Yeah. They've always been that way. The only the only uh, player over there is Brody Young. He was a, uh, uh, a lineman. He was one of the captains and he was hurt early on with okay. an ankle injury and, uh, and he's out for the season. Okay, so I mean, shapes up, uh, Jim, is an interesting game. Again, I think the Red Tornadoes need to look at a running game. Kligerman's at full strength, but they're going to have to run the ball and they're going to have to throw short passes, at least to open <laughs> up that defense a little bit, or they're going to they're going to get smothered by it. Well, if we if we had a nickel for every time uh, we talk about the Red Tornadoes needing to throw short passes, we wouldn't need to work on <laughs> it. Uh, but but on a but what does that tell you? <laughs> Nobody's listening. Nobody listens. But, yeah, there but you on it on a more serious note, you talk about they want to blitz and and whether Shimokin's going to blitz Fernando or if they want to blitz to stop the run, the Red Tornadoes have really. A, um, they have a chance to beat that with one guy, number 89. Yeah. Jurasky, 6'4", 260 pounds. He's going to Northwestern. 
and I looked up the statistics today. Going into the fourth quarter of last week's game, now they moved him to tight end to take advantage of his size and speed. He's caught six passes. So he's not in there pass blocking, and you're not throwing him the football. Right. So somebody exactly. with that size and talent and ability level, you're not utilizing him at all. Keep If you want to keep him in, fine. Help him block, pick up the blitz, or send him out in patterns quickly. All right, down deep for the Indians, the receiver is going to be uh, Demsko, Tillett, and Burns. Uh, three, four, and five, actually, in number-wise. It's going to go right down the middle. It's touched, Ooh. actually, down there by Tillett. Tillett picks it up at the one-yard line, and Tillett's in trouble down inside <clears throat> the five-yard line. I'm not sure what he was thinking there. He kind know. of skidded past. He had his hand out, and he touched it, so then he had trouble. Picked it up at the one, and he got it up. We'll see. I think they're going to they're gonna say he got it to about the five. We'll see where they actually set it down at, but not much farther than that. So the engine will start in a hole here to begin the football game on offense. Quarterback. Number 11, Tucker Yost, the sophomore. Now, again, the key to the, de to the offense or the defense of the Red Tornadoes, you stop the fullback and the wing tee in this offense, right. and you stop the offense. That's the way it's looked so far this year anyway. They go in motion with Miller, and it's going to be. Jurassic. <laughs> they gave it to Dietrich, number 10, and he ran right into Jurassic and a loss on the play. Now, they put, that time you saw the fullback go in motion out of the yes. formation. This is a, a really almost a, the, the way to explain it would be a strict wing tee. They don't sure. they don't vary out of the wing tee, and they run it as it was designed as a wing tee, whereas Southern will has, a, you know, like a million yes. variations of it. The Indians are more, they're a wing tee. When they say it, they run it that way. Now, they come out of it a little bit here, and they're going to leave Miller, or, or, I'm sorry, yeah, Miller is the deep back, and Miller's going to pick up some hard yardage out to tough. about the nine. You're right, Drake. Uh, picks up a tough four yards that time for the Indians. I mean, he's, he's just a bull, but again, he's, the, he's not the kind of guy that's going to outrun you. He's not going to break no. through the line and outrun you because, first of all, when you look at him, he's six foot, 205 pounds. Now, he's a junior, so, and this is actually a fairly young team when you take a look at their, uh, at their numbers. They're all coming back, a lot of the skill guys. So, Shimokin has a bright future even going into next year. Yeah, and I think a lot of that um, is, if you want to look at the success Shimokin had last year versus this year, you can really attribute it to a literal sophomore slump for a lot of these kids. Now the Indians stay in an I formation here. And again, it's going to be uh, pass Yost, and, and it's going to be oh, almost, almost picked yeah. off. He was trying to hit uh, Hunter Bloom down there, but he threw it a little bit short, yep. and he almost picked it off. The Red Tornadoes almost uh, had a That was Duran, uh, I think, that went up for that one. Now he threw that in the coverage. There were yes, three Red Tornadoes in front of uh, the receiver. So. And you see, you got to remember last year, Tucker Yost came in in the middle of the season as a freshman mm -hmm. and yeah, took over the quarterback position. So he has, you know, a year and a half under his belt here. Now kicking out of the end zone now. The first punt of the game for the Indians is out of their own end zone. That is uh, Tillett uh, going to do the kicking for them. No pressure by the Red Tornadoes. He gets out a nice kick. He kicks it towards the sideline. It's going to bounce a little short right along the 30. It's going to go inside the 30. The Red Tornadoes will be first and 10 in great field position at the Indian 29-yard line. And that and that field positioning directly related uh, on a positive note to the kickoff team that hasn't always been stellar this season. Uh, if that's you know if that's the first big play of the season <laughs> that they've that they've offered their offense, I wouldn't be surprised. But it was it's nice. It's week 10. Let's get it together. Now we'll see what happens here again. Uh, number four for the Red Tornadoes will be the quarterback tonight, uh, Dom Farinato. Dominic, he is a freshman. And we'll see what the Red Tornadoes do. They come out in a split backfield with Lesko and Klingerman behind Farinato. And now the big guy, Jurowski, goes in motion and they pitch it to Klingerman. Klingerman drops the, the ball. Yep. So the first play, the Red Tornadoes drop the ball on the ground and a loss on the play. The so neither four. offense starting off with a bang here. It's like number 22, uh, Anthony Anonia in that time to make the stop. And that's, we already see the Red Tornadoes are going to have to limit their mistakes tonight. Um, you talk about the short passing game and that that's how they're going to be effective, especially with Farinato and a, just uh, very minimal experience. But second and 15 isn't a good way to start. That five and six yard pickups aren't going to help when you're facing third and long. All right, they'll stay in a split backfield. They have Jurowski in the slot position. This time it's a pass play. We look for Verano. Verano catches it, and Verano will take it down to the 25-yard line. Preston Burns, number three, makes the tackle for Shimokin that time. 
We'll take a moment Rest to welcome in. everybody that's out yes. on the internet tonight. Welcome to the game. Uh, those of you not in, in Pennsylvania or listening to us far away, it's a fairly cold night. It'll be in the low 40s before six. the end of the game. The field Slow took about five points. inches of rain from Hurricane Sandy during the week. In fact, it rained today, most of the day on and off. Not hard. Not, yeah, I mean, sometimes hard. Uh, so it's in good condition. To be truthful, you, can, you know, when you look at what the water it took, but it's not perfect. Now, it is not raining now, and it looks like it won't for the rest of the game. We have a timeout on the field now. It's timeout. Tornadoes. Red Tornadoes. <clears throat> So the Reds are going their first timeout. 8.55 still in the first quarter. It's a third and six. And they're on the Indian 25-yard line. So this might be a game where, you know, you may not have a lot of opportunity. No. You've got to take advantage <laughs> of whatever comes your way. And well, that's the what I think Coach Francesco's thinking. <coughs> the Tornadoes came out. They lined up with all receiver slots and everything else to the outside. And uh, Dominic had nobody behind him for protection. So that might have been the reason. And. Yeah. And although um, Farinato, he is an athletic quarterback, he can run. Um, I don't think we'll see a lot of that tonight with Wasilewski not even suited up. And, um, really can't take any kind of chances here with Farinato. Right, they're not real deep at quarterback. You're right. It would be interesting. Now, Verano volunteered to take snaps during the week. And, again, that's the kind right. of kid he is. You don't yeah. get surprised by that at all. Of course, he was a quarterback uh, a couple of years back yeah. and then for half a year last year. So he said he would step in if they needed him. And that's always good to hear now. One back behind him. It's he's under it pressure is. and he goes down very quickly uh. down there. Number 19 in the stop, Hunter Bloom for the Indians, and nobody touched nope. Mr. Bloom. He nobody. came from the outside Hunter corner, Bloom. nobody touched him, the and he makes a sack. That is a loss of about eight, nine time. yards that time. And you're in that really just ugly area of the field where you're entirely too close to punt, but it's a little far out of, a little deep out of field goal range. Well, I think he's going to put them back down there again. This is, He's this bringing is, the punt team in. This is where you're putting all the faith in Verano because if he kicks this back into the end zone, it's really only Verano about 11 yard down. difference in field position. Verano lets it rip. A nice, nice kick. Now we'll see if they can get to it and it scoots into the end zone. Touchback, the yeah, Indians will take it on the 20 yard. Zone. That's a hard. Yeah, it is. Got enough That's field really there hard. to try to, no try to pooch that in. Yep. Um, your only only, only chance is to try to get it out of bounds. And well, out of bounds are real high. You know, other. everybody was... always says, you know, you kick it out of bounds. You know how hard that is to do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you always well, have to think <clears> of the angle. You know, yep. when you tell a kicker, like, to kick it out of bounds, he's trying to figure out the angle yep. to kick it out of. Plus, you have a rush. And I always hear people say, yeah, you should just kick that out of bounds. It's not that easy. Trust me, it isn't. Well, we saw this early in the season with, I can't recall who it was, a, an opposing punter was trying to punt away from Klingerman and had a heck of a time keeping right. it on the sidelines. Right, exactly. I think that was Montoursville, actually, we saw that. Handoff goes inside. The runner is free, and that's Miller. And Miller in a big run out to the 31-yard line. Stopped he stopped by Duran and Lesko. Draven Miller. But he'll Draven have, I think, enough for, enough for the first down. First down, yeah, pick it up. Ball's on about there. the 31-yard line. So first and 10, Indians on a 10-yard run by Miller. It's good for a first and just off tackle. There was nothing yeah. fancy about yeah. that. Outside and there the won't be. I mean, no. this running game is not going to dazzle you. You're, it's going to come right at you. You know where it's coming at. You just got to find a way to stop it. It helps when you can run through a couple arm tackles. Now, interestingly enough, they've been in the eye the entire night so far. They have not, we've not seen a wing. Miller lost his footing a little bit there, and Lesko right. gave him a good hit, and he avoided it because he hit him a little. T yep. get this hitting high, I, I just will never understand the hitting high idea here. <laughs> and again, if you haven't noticed in, in these series that they're running, they're running away from uh, Eric Jurasky. They're going to the opposite well, everybody, side. Yeah, everybody field. does. I mean, you'd yep. be goofy not to. Yep. So you, and that, that even makes it more predictable. That's why I always wondered, you know, this defense exactly. gives up so much yardage and points. We don't even know which way they're coming even, and you, and you don't stop them. Just been their Achilles heel. Now, they do have Candelora out at that defensive tackle to try to shore up that side a little bit. Quarterback rolls out. He looks downfield. He's being chased by Jurasky, and he throws it away. There was no receiver uh, out there. Jurasky, uh, <laughs> Jurasky took Tucker Yost down at the end of the yes. play. By number 11, Tucker and you Yost can only have Jurasky fall on you so many times <laughs> before you're not going to you're not going to be able to do anything. That's 265 pounds land on you, and he's usually doing it at speed, which is even more interesting. Just ask, um, was it last week, Jav Javon Bats? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah, I mean, he's he just such a force to reckon with here. We've seen all season long. And again, that's why, that's why you're a top recruit to, to Northwestern. All right, it's third down and eight from the Indian 33-yard line. Are we going to respot the ball here? Yeah, they put it in the wrong spot. They did? They did, <laughs> yeah. No, all we right. didn't do that. They did. Okay, now right. you see the wing T. This is a true wing T. Look, quick pass. It's a, it's a, Ooh, Verano. it's kind of a touch pass. Verano uh. almost intercepted it. He was trying to hit Tillett. Uh, yeah, now, the, 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 the two guys on this team, if they're going to throw a pass, they're going to throw the yeah. pass to number 14, McLaughlin, McLaughlin, or number five, Tillett. I mean, they're, they're really the two guys that, that catch most. In fact, they catch probably 90% of the passes that Yost will throw. Now, it brings up fourth down, and again, the Indians will go back to kick number five, Zach Tillett, the junior, and he'll number be kicking five, down there Zachary to Verano Tillett, and please. Gilger. No pressure from the Red Tornadoes. Nice kick this time. Oh, and I'm sorry, it went out of bounds. I thought that was not as good as it looked. Now, there's a stoppage of play. So it's punt is marked out of bounds on the 50 yard line. Okay, they're going to let it, they're going to let it there. He went, he went out 50. of bounds, actually, right at the fit. You're right, right at mid. That looked a lot better than than, yes. uh, than, it, than it actually was when he let it go. So it lands at the 50. The Red Tornadoes again have good field position here in the first quarter. Uh, we'll see what they're able to do with it on the uh, next series here. They had, <laughs> did not do a whole lot on the first series. And now they'll come out again in that split backfield. It's Lesko and Klingerman. And you have Jurasky, the big guy, in the slot position. And now Lesko begins to move along the line. They pitch it to Klingerman, trying to get him outside. Klingerman has some room. Klingerman stays on his feet and picks up about four yards on the play. Out, Made a nice move to elude the, the initial tackle on the play, uh, but then yeah, ran out of room along in. the sideline. But that, here you see the replay, and he's going to be on the far side, so it's going to be harder to look at. But tackle, you think he was going to be brought down right along the line of scrimmage there, and he actually eluded it. And I think that was, that number, was number four, four, four Demsko. Yeah, but the, initial, the, the final six. tackle was made by... Hashuga, Andrew Hashuga, number 37. And you'll hear his name a lot on defense. He's one of the stalwarts we talked about in that. Uh, I mean, actually, you have him and you have Miller, as who end up a lot of times as the two inside guys. Now, you'll see Miller off in the end here a little bit. They do change around a lot. It's a pass play again to Verano. Miller had his hand on it, but Verano picked it up Verano and went inside the 35 down to the 33 the yard line, first and 10. Red Tornado. And that time Miller saw what was yes, happening. He did. Got his hand up and tipped it, but Verano kept his eye on the ball and, and brought it down. Burns. Good pass. And that's, a, a, that's what we talked about time and time again. Those nice little short out passes. Give them a little bit of conference. Uh, keep throwing. And you're setting up the, the uh, corner man also. Uh, he starts playing a little bit tighter, and all of a sudden you, you break it to the outside. Look at the mismatch on yeah. the far side of the field. Right, you look at you look at over there, and they got 89 as a split end out there. He fakes it inside and throws down Philly as Verano, and it it was nicely uh, knocked down by Tillett, but that time he kind of threw it behind Verano. Verano didn't have much of a chance at it. But you saw, you're right, you, you were looking down there, and what you saw was Dembsko. Dembsko was five foot four, 140 pounds. He was covering. The big guy down there, who is six foot four, two hundred and sixty-five pounds. You only have to get the ball anywhere close to him, and there's but, just no way you can defend it. But again, it's what we what we talked about earlier. Drasky was out there, and yeah. Farinato never Give looked that way. He was well, a decoy he, the whole yeah. way. He was not. He was not designed to get the ball thrown to him. You're absolutely right. That was never going to go to him, no matter what happened. And the other thing, I've watched Dembsko over the years. I actually saw Dembsko come in as a freshman. I tell you what, you don't want to underestimate him. <laughs> I don't care how big you are, he'll he'll whack you. Uh. Farinato tried to run the Farinato ball up the middle, the and they just got him by a shoelace there, or he had some room. Now he got back to the line of scrimmage, or maybe he lost a yard or so on it. It'll be third down Most and 11, and third neither third offense 11. exactly stunning the crowd right now. And we saw last year quite often when the Red Tornadoes offense went into a funk, they went into the avalanche package with the two fullbacks in front of Lamb. Yeah. And we've probably seen that twice all yeah, season Yeah, we don't this see year. that package hardly. You're right. Even when we're at the goal line, we don't see right. that. We don't really and see that package. It's just something to think about that when you need a guaranteed four or five yards, that package yeah. will get it done. Now, Byersman comes into the backfield for the uh, Red Tornadoes. He's going to have to snap the ball, and he finally gets it off. A big no. rush right up the yep. middle, and he's going to be brought down a sack. That's number 37 number on the play, Azuga. 
And if he wasn't going to do it, number 24, Eric Taylor, was coming in from the left side, and nobody touched him. Now, again, that's a play where you know they're coming. There, there was no doubt they were going to come at you on that all you play. Have to, all you have to do is set up a little pocket, let him stay in it, and, and hit a little flat pass. No, you're absolutely right, Wayne. All he needs is an extra second to make yeah. his read. That's it. Fourth and 17, and the Red Tornadoes will be punting. Until it's down around his five-yard line, Randall's going to Actually, a very nice kick is yeah, bounced in good front one. of it, and it's going to roll dead inside the five-yard line, then along the four. It'll be that's first what and he ten from the four. Nice yeah. kick. But he what he did again, he he waited until his, uh, his all of his the, the guys got down and on the coverage, yeah. and then kicked the ball and it was right in the middle of everybody, and they just let it roll down into five. And that's Verano's like like experience line. certainly First showing oh, itself. Yeah. I didn't know, Jimmy, if you knew that Wayne is the resident kicking expert. Actually, I had I had heard oh, okay. that Wayne was quite a quite a kicker. That's why I don't say anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a lot of movement now by the uh, Indians as they try to get into formation. Now oh, the ball falls on the ground. And, and picked up touchdown. by Duran. Touchdown. Oh, Red Tornadoes. It bounced Red right into Duran's so hand. Duran. Yep. At the three-yard line, he dove into the end zone, and they're on the board. A defensive touchdown by the Red Tornadoes. You know, that was a play you saw. The most, I, I think half of those guys were moving from the Shemokin yeah. side, getting on there, and, and, and the, he, how he did that, he never got the hand off all did. the way to him, and he reached his hand up and popped it up in the air. Duran catches it and goes into the end zone. So, they, you know, they're down inside their five a couple of times. You can only do that a few times a game without something bad happening to you, and this is what's happened to them all season yes. long is this kind of play that happened now. Vrano into attempt, attempt the extra point. Farinato the holder. Vrano puts it up, and it is mm -hmm. no, no good. good. <laughs> yeah, didn't wide, call that wide one. right. <laughs> So the score remains 6 nothing at the 348 mark of the first quarter. But I'm telling you, this is a reoccurring nightmare for the Indians. Are these kind of plays that, that get them behind in the game? Yeah, he, he didn't even, uh, Tillett didn't even get the ball in the bread basket no, that know, hit the ground and again, I'm so not, quick. I'm not second-guessing coaches, I'm not. But you think to yourself, you're on the five, you're on the four. Why are you shifting and doing, a, you know, 100 things? Go into wing T, what you do best, give it to 36, and see if he can plow his way out of the way. And they didn't do that, and it cost them. Oh, well, there was a hole there, though. That was just it. Where well, we're at, we, we could see the hole open up off tackle, but uh, ball never got to him. And we're, uh, we're certainly equal opportunity when it comes to our questioning or not questioning. As we wondered the same thing when, right, we'll when, uh, when right, Farinato yeah. dropped back yeah. into the end zone three, last week. Yeah, we, don't care, we don't care who no. the coach is. Yeah. That's what you think about us. Five, yeah. the it's a very sensitive area of the field. We shoot from the hip with no bullets on our gun every game, <laughs> and it doesn't really matter. <laughs> All right, Langton in to kick off for the Red Tornadoes. He signals he's ready. Another good kick down to about the seven yard line. It's number four coming up field, Dembsko. Dembsko had a nice hole there number and brought four. down very quickly down there by Panko, John number Dembsko 48 for the Reds. And now he had seven. some uh, help down there the from number 83, Kwiatkowski. Number and uh, actually some pretty good field position for the down. Indians compared to where they've been as the ball's out like to about the 29-yard line where it's first and 10. And, 10. and that, is, that is the one benefit, I suppose, of giving up an, a defensive touchdown is that you get the chance right away to get back out there and try to redeem yourself. All right, they stay in the eye formation. And it's Miller. And Miller brought down that right at the line of scrimmage. Candelora yes. on yep. the hit. Candelora hit him before he ever really got a second step on him right Brady at the line Candelora of scrimmage at second and ten. And Candelora, he's one of those kids that it's almost like if in a batting order he was he was batting in front of Jurassic. They don't. They're not going right. to run at Jurassic, <laughs> yeah, so they're yeah. going to run no. at Candelora. That's, that's, he certainly benefits. <laughs> that's a good analogy at that. I like the way you the way you said that. It's, that's exactly what they're doing, and that's why he's not at nose tackle. That's why they moved him out to shore that up a little and bit. And did you see who was standing there waiting to make the tackle? Also, Jurassic. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Now a split backfield for the Indians. They put Miller in motion out of the formation. This will be a pass play for Yost. He looks downfield. He was trying to get the ball down there to Eric Taylor, but just a little bit too long. And he was, and Taylor was open, too. Taylor had too. some room, yeah. He had some room and uh, some green in front of him to pick up if he catches that ball. Tucker Yost just a little bit off on the passing tonight. Well, one of the, I mean, one of the things you're seeing there is the Indians are employing a very uh, quick passing game, and yes. they have to. Mm -hmm. uh, again, they're, they're, they're thinking about Drasky, they're thinking about Candelora. But when that when that when they do that again, he has to make a quick decision, you know, right away. He doesn't have time to really do a lot of looking downfield. This time they give it to Miller and Miller drop down there by number, number 57 the for the Red Tornadoes. Barwicky, I had to look because of course Barwicky wears every number on the on the roster. I'm surprised he didn't come out as like number seven or something tonight. But a nice play by Barwicky, and once again the Indians will be punting. Number five and this is this is going to be a pivotal possession for the Red Tornadoes. Your defense has played s solid so far, and it looks like you're going to get pretty good field position again. You need to go down and score. Nice kick this time. This time I can say that Vitality kicks it away from everybody, and it's going to take a nice roll, and the Red Tornadoes will get it first and 10 from their own 39-yard line, their deepest uh, possession the so far. 34. 34. 34 oh, sorry, 34. First right. and 10, Red Tornadoes from their own 34. Take those eyes back. Wow. <laughs> I was using my regular eyes on that. <laughs> Take that's those what, back. That's where the concern is. Yeah. <laughs> They're my normal eyes. I really haven't used the uh, the other eye since the you know debacle in our school. Oh really? Nah. Just, and apparently did. I didn't. I don't, apparently I don't have the technology for those eyes. That's what they told me. And you didn't have the receipt, so you couldn't take it back. No, I got stuck with them. Sometimes they scared a the dog at home with them. Now that's about <laughs> it. All right, first and ten for Farinato, the big guy. Jurassic comes in motion across the formation, and it's a run play to Klingerman. And Klingerman didn't have a lot of room no, there. Really Miller was there. looking right at him. Now, he did manage to elude six. Miller, but when you elude Miller, you ended up running right into number 52, 52 down there, Yuha. And Mike Yuha, another Mike stalwart yes. on that defense. He's another guy you have to watch out for down there. He's one of the tougher guys. Yuha is a senior, one of, the, one of the few seniors out there. And, of course, we, Jose and I both know that Yuha has Mount Carmel roots in him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I formation now on the second and seven. And it goes to Klingerman. And Klingerman, Klingerman actually makes a nice run. He carried Juha that yeah, time over did. the 40 yard line out to the 41. And he literally carried him. Juha <laughs> jumped on him there right at the line of scrimmage. And, and uh, Klingerman just kept his feet going as he always does. So it'll bring up a third down and three now for the Red Tornadoes. Fire Schmidt comes out. Give them a one-back offense here on a third and three. Jurowski in that slot formation. Now Jurowski comes in motion, and they'll run behind him and look at the hole that he created. And Klingerman he picks brings up. it up over the 45 the to the 46, down, first and 10 red tornadoes. And again, it's very hard not to gain you know, two or three yards just by the, the key to that play right. is to get close enough to him as he's going through the line, and, and you're going to pick up some yardage. Even if he just falls forward, you pick up three yards. 77, first Jordan Glossick. Makes that tackle for Shimokan Indians. All right, Klingerman, the lone back now. They have un they are not covering the Brano. two receivers down here. I'm not really sure about that. Klingerman on the carry out to the 47-yard uh, line or 48-yard line, but that was a weird. They didn't yeah. even look at the two That's receivers. That's the second second number time we set up like that. And never they looked at them. I'm, I'm very so surprised about that. Drave Miller, number. Uh, 36 making the tackle. Yeah, guys, you see on these last couple of plays, the Red Tornadoes seem content to just pound it in the line and take four yards, and that's fine running behind Jurassic like that. But you would think with Klingerman's, um, let's say, availability issues that he's had the last couple of weeks, if you're just going to do that, really anybody can run up behind Jurassic for four yards. I don't you don't need I to could. subject him to the hits. I'm not sure I could. <laughs> Oh, that nope. time. They, they yeah. saw that play <laughs> coming. He only did that so often, and that time Miller said, that's not going to happen another time. Miller comes off the edge the there. The too slow. Uh, it was too slow uh, getting yeah. set up that time. And Miller just come right off the corner. That's the end of the first quarter of play here at the Silver Bowl for the coal bucket game. The score, the Red Tornado, six. The Indians, zero. And again, an Indian mistake cost them the yes. six points. So... 
an interesting game so far. Now, again, a Shemokin offense that struggles. I mean, there's, there, there's no two ways about that. You can see they're struggling even tonight. Again, it's an offense that's, it's very, it's very difficult to have an offense that's centered on your fullback. Yes. You know what I mean? It, you're centered on the fullback. You can see what they run. The Red Tornadoes ended the, uh, wow, they ended the first quarter with a minus two yards rushing, 22 yards passing. The Indians, 18 yards rushing and zero yards passing. So yeah, about a, about a six, that's about a six point game when you look at it and it was a break that caused it. So the Red Tornadoes will be on offense. It's third down now and about seven as they're at their own 48 yard line. No way it looks, it's a defensive game going to win here. You know, one of the teams, uh, uh, Shemovin's playing a great defense against the uh, Tornadoes offense. Look at everybody coming up on the line. Look <laughs> Take at, a look at this. Look yeah, I was yeah. going to say, this is amazing. We fake it, look downfield. He's trying to hit Verano, oh. and Verano just couldn't bring it in. He was, I'll tell you what, he was well covered Finger down. Tip. See his, his, uh, Tillett was well covering him, uh, but just Passes off his fingertips, and it's fourth down, and the Red Tornadoes will be Now, there's Duran, 6'3". Uh, you know, certainly a height advantage that time, and he was a half a step scorer, past the defender. Well, again, it, I mean, it's a freshman quarterback. 13, he, he, right now, he, when zero. he comes up to the line of scrimmage, right now he knows who he's throwing it to. Yeah, he I, does. I he's, not, he's not looking to see who's open. And that may come as the game progresses, and it may not. As a freshman, he may never do that this at this game, but he has the ability to, so you got to be careful with him all the time. A nice kick by Verano, and it's going to roll inside the 20 and be down Verano's about the 19-yard line. We're going to be first and 10 Indians from the there. But again, Farinato will make it more comfortable, but again, he's also under a vicious rush here. They're coming at him just like they did last week, and that's what any good team's going to do. Yep. Uh, but again, we've I've seen Mitchell this kid. I've nothing. watched him play. Freshman, I've watched him play JV. And he's the real he's deal. Got it. He's, he's got it. He's the real got deal. It. So we just give him some time, and they've got to help him a little bit. And that's the problem. He's been, when he's dropped back, it's been an obvious passing situation. It's third and long. And they've been able to dial up that blitz and go after him. All right, they stay in the I formation. It's a, it's a, well, it was supposed to be a quick handoff, and it wasn't. And now Beishman buries Yost all the way back inside the 10-yard line. That was a broken play. Yeah, that's what he, he was trying to hand the ball. And it wasn't to Miller. Miller no, no. came out to the uh, flat here. Who was the fullback in that in that set? Was that, I don't think who that was. I couldn't see the fullback. But that, he, he well, was, nobody went off the field, yeah. so it was, it's, was it Tillin? No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't five, no. Let me see when they let the line back up. It was again. ten. Yeah, I, I thought it was too. And and he, I mean, he was supposed to get the ball, but he didn't realize it, and left Yost out there with with nothing that, that he could have possibly done with it. So, a big loss. It's second and nineteen now, and they Tillet. give it to Tillett until it tries to get outside, and he'll be stopped by Lesko. Lesko, yeah, coming in the very quickly from that line. Fourteen yard line, little jawbone going down there between uh, Miller and <laughs> Byersmith. I always love when they got their face mask the jammed together <laughs> like that. Brings up a third and 15. Coach Iwanek says to Byers Mint, keep your opinions to yourself. <laughs> I think exactly Coach, Karm, Coach Karm was over too. <laughs> All right, third down now and 15. They go back into an eye. Oh, ball's on the, the ground. ball is we'll on the ground the and the field. Indian offense is truly struggling. And this is, if you're, if you're the Mount Carmel sideline, you have to be excited about this. You have the freshman quarterback out there, and your, off, your offense is looking, uh, spitting and sputtering to say the least so far. So what's your defense do? Well, they've played uh, 14 minutes of almost flawless football. Um, and if they can keep that up throughout this game, the Red Tornado's chances will continue to improve. I mean, it's interesting for the Indians. It's, well, I mean, I think Coach Four wouldn't call it interesting, but, <laughs> I mean, week 10, they still make the exact same mistakes they made in week one. As far as handling the ball, they just fumble the ball so much. Once See, again, a uh, poor kick by Tillett yep. as he, he's trying to and kick away from us, but he kicked it out of bounds and again. And that's what Jimmy alluded to Yeah, before. we just went through that whole process. You know, we it's very hard to process. do that. It, 
actually came out at the uh, yeah, look at the field position 31 yard, yep. line 31 yard line where they would have picked up the first, first down so Indians. yeah so it's it's been a tough night kicking wise for the Indians but again he's trying to kick it away yep. and that's not easy to do and it just is not only easy to do me I look at it this way go right at it kick it straight down the field yeah. and take and, your shot yeah. and take your shot because you're not winning the game this way you're losing field all right all right all right split backfield now it's going to be Lesko and Klingerman. He has two guys, and they're split out to the left of the formation. It's a pass play all the way under pressure right away. He eludes the pressure. Oh. He has a guy downfield, Klingerman, and he overthrew uh, him. He got a little bit nervous he, there. Yes, he did. If he would have <laughs> taken his <laughs> time, his time, he would have got him. He would have got him. That was a touchdown. He eluded the tackle, but then he got a little bit worked up there, and I don't blame him, but uh, he had a guy open down there. So it'll be second and ten. And even on the incompletion there, you see what Farinato can bring to the table and what he's going to offer oh, yeah. as he gets yeah, older. He can elude yeah. the rush. And he and it was a little much on the ball, but it was still a very nice touch pass. Yeah. And if you notice, he got it out there. He just flicked his wrist. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, You're exactly that's right. That's all it was. Yeah. He did, well, he, couldn't. He, <coughs> didn't, he didn't get himself set. He didn't do all the things you want him to do. But, I mean, that's pretty tough to do under the pressure he was, he was trying to Absolutely. do it there. Rano in motion now. They're in the shotgun. Now, we did not – think we would see much of the shotgun but he lets oh. it go it's a wobbler and it's going to fall incomplete Duran was the guy that he was aiming Duran at down he was covered by Dembsko but that one left his, his hand a little bit oddly and, and kind of wounded ducked itself to the ground and now it will be third and ten and again yeah you find yourself in good field position and you squander the first two downs with incomplete passes um now he's thrown into a uh, a good wind Blowing into his oh, face. Oh, certainly, you certainly know, not, so. not at all on on Farinato. Just no. in the situation, you would I I was expecting more uh Run. more of a run heavy offense. Me too. But hey, now uh, interesting enough, last night at supper club they talked about Farinato and the shotgun, and I you know I said, well he, we, I guess he'll be in the shotgun a lot because of the pressure, and they said abs absolutely not. In fact, they thought he did much better under center than he did in the shotgun. So. There you see actually the first shotgun, and the Indians nope. are going to take Klingerman they down for a big loss. That's number 55, 55 finally making a stop down there. Chase Tillett. Is Chase uh, Wes's brother? Chase Tillett. Uh, yes. Is yes, it is. On the tackle in the backfield. So a big loss a on the play, and neither one of these offenses is going to have a highlight film nope. so far tonight. And again, just that in, that entire drive 16. I thought was curious. The two incomplete passes, and then you run a toss. It might be the wide side of the field, but it's the weak side of your formation. And it was, hey, Klingerman, can you make something happen? You know what's curious? We've punted in their territory every time <laughs> so far tonight. That's another curious moment in time. Rano again pooches it. It's going to hit the ground. They're trying to get a roll, and they do. So, again, the Indians are going to start from their own 12-yard line now. They have just had horrible field position, and unfortunately, they keep dropping the ball on the ground when they're that far deep, and that's what they've got to try to clean up here. And the truth is... Uh, they're, they're getting terrible field position oh, because different. our yeah. offense is not I'm doing anything no. to generate. <laughs> you know, you get the ball on the 30-yard line, and their 30-yard line, you, you can't move it downfield. Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of this is kind of like a weird game so far, I'll say that for it. It's 8.48 in the second quarter. The Red Tornadoes lead 6-0 on a defensive touchdown. Uh, the Indians in a split backfield behind Yost. It's going to be handed off, and it's handed off a to Miller. Miller. And Miller's going to bring it up to about the 50-yard line, a gain of three on the play. Raven Miller. And it, again, just if it wasn't for a fortuitous bounce, I mean, I'll, if that ball doesn't hop right into Duran's hands and he can fall Pick into the end zone, I, I don't think there's a reason to believe there wouldn't be 0-0 at this point with the way <laughs> the right. Rangers' offense has yeah. been performing. Nobody looks like they want to go, go jumping into the end zone, that's for sure, on their own accord anyway. So <laughs> we'll see. And again, the Red Tornadoes, we knew, I mean, again, they're, they're, you're looking at only probably half the offense that they've used all year because of the, of the situation they're in. Uh, uh, Yost Tucker keeps pass. the ball. He looks down Feely. He has a man wide open, and he hits him down there. That's 14, McLaughlin. Yep. And he was wide open down there. Nobody Last covered McLaughlin. And for the first time, the Indians 15, are in Red Tornado territory. 14, well, maybe McLaughlin. they're not. We're, we're no. no. We're well, right at right the 50. Think, right at we're at the 50. I didn't, why is, I didn't why did you get the 50? I didn't see. I didn't see how that happened. Let me look at the replay here. Maybe not. No, but that's the Red Tornadoes got burned there. Yeah. But there were a couple times already tonight where um, where the quarterback had just the underthrew the ball a little bit. Where Yost underthrew the ball, but the the Indian was behind the Red Tornado defender. Miller. Miller up Miller, the middle. Miller chugs along for about a yard on the play. The Red Tornadoes all Raven over Miller, that play once again. 
Fireman helping out down there. Let's go getting off. Initial tackler, Eric Actually, Draski. Uh, Draski. Almost, almost no gain on the no play. We'll call it second and ten. Second and ten. But you know, again, in the tornadoes, there's McLaughlin, the leading, the leading receiver on this team, and he goes past everybody. Mm -hmm. I just I just never understand that. All right, now they have a wing T look. They bring a guy across the formation. That's number 21, Wilk. And Wilk picks up some big yardage. Number it's going to take Gilder to finally bring him down. Carrier, but he's Ryan inside Wilk. the 40 down to the red right turn. He'll 39, and that's enough for a first down. It's first and 10 Indians. Some good blocking right. that time by the Indians, pulling guards, everything. It Everybody was out down. there and, and uh, gave some nice first room there for the uh, Wilk, uh, uh, Ryan, to pick up that first down. Yeah, the big block on that one was um, the receiver on this side picked up Duran on the corner. And with the way the Red Tornado's defense operates, if you can kick the end out and keep the corner out of the play, you're going to pick up a lot of yardage until those linebackers and safeties get there. Out of the eye the ball's ball's on, the on the ground, ground again. again. Hey, and Yost just dropped it that yeah. time. There was no pressure there. They just dropped the ball. Now, either, either the He's center just, doesn't come back the same yeah. way you know, each time, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't want to judge him on this one, but certainly it just hit the ground with nobody, you know, causing that to happen. It seems like uh, Tucker's pulling away from the center a little bit too quick. Well, I think, I think that now Tucker got, see, they, <laughs> they had to get, Tucker was disappeared underneath 89, Jurassic, they couldn't find him. So they had to finally get him out of there to see if he was still in there. So they keep position, they lose some yardage on the play. It'll be second down now and about 11. And at this, the at this point, if nothing else, one. the Indians have certainly flipped the field. Yeah, yes, that they've done. First, first time all half, but that they have done. All right, we have again a wing T look. He puts Tillett in motion, gives it Tillett to Tillett, has, and yep. Tillett goes nowhere on the play as the Red Tornadoes all over that one. Again, that's going to be Kwiatkowski and Candelora. Yep. Candelora and Kwiatkowski making the stop. No gain on the play. Brings up a third and 11. But he has brought intensity to every single game that he's ever played in. He really has. He, he is just a kid you love to watch play football, and he loves football. Now, he's going to college, believe it or not, for math. Time so, something, really? something you could enjoy. That, yeah. that, that's, that's what you teach. But he's going to be a math major. Oof. Good for him. Where's yep. he, where uh, he going? Where does he, he want to go? I think he said Shippensburg. Yeah, he's going to Shippensburg. Yep. We have a timeout quarter. on the field here Lewis at the 528 mark of the Lewis second Lewis period Lewis here. The Red Tornado's up 6-0. Not a lot of defense seven, going on around here on either Warrior side of the ball. Nothing. The Indians Milton, continually keep the ball on, on the ground all the time, which has not helped them. Except for one play to McLaughlin for a big gainer, but the Tornadoes and the Schmilkin Indians have not generated much offense whatsoever. That's, we, we that's for we sure. We didn't expect it. We really didn't. Again, seeing well, a, a freshman quarterback for us, again, you don't, you're don't. you not seeing the tight end offense. You, right. All that's gone. I mean, you're taking all of that offense away from them now. But see, what what used to, what was working was the power backfield, putting the three boys back there mm -hmm. and just pounding off tackle, one way pounding off tackle. And we haven't seen that in the last couple games. Right. All right, they come out on the third and 11 now. <coughs> Excuse me. One receiver. Yost is under center, and it's a Dead penalty on the ball. play. I no, a timeout, a quick timeout by timeout. the Indians as the play was being centered. They called a timeout, so Coach Ford did not like something he saw there. I don't know. The only one that was out on the pass pattern was Till at number five. He was a wide receiver right in front of their bench. Everybody else was playing tight. Now they're not they're not much of a shotgun group either. He stays under center for the most part. They don't do a lot of shotgun uh, formation so far anyway. No, you're right. And I think you mentioned before that Yost can t he pulls away from the center a little bit. I think if he knows he's going to have to get this ball downfield, he might take um, that extra half second and pull away a little quicker yeah. to yeah. get himself some separation between uh, or away from the defensive line. Unbelievable how quick this game is going. I'll five say that. Minutes I think the same thing myself. 528 <laughs> left in this first half. Starting to remind me already of last season's game. It seems like there was going to be no offense. And then yeah. and then at the end, um, yeah. the Red Tornadoes opened <laughs> it up a little bit. We're, we're, we're taking a nap during that game in the first half, and then all of a sudden it burst open. 
All right, now they come out of a split backfield. And no, again, movement. a penalty flag. This time the penalty is a movement. Wayne, you might have spoke too soon about this game going quickly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Still 527 now. Yeah, I look across that field. I don't know. if you, Do you know the Dembsko boy, Wayne, much? John, yes. Yeah. You know, I always laugh at that guy. I, sm I smile. I don't want to laugh at him because he's too tough for that. But yeah, you, know his dad, you know his dad? No. I know his dad very well. Now, his dad's a big guy, bigger than me. Now, I always think, you know, if he that had his dad's body, what he'd be like on the no. field. I mean, he is a true football player. And he's one of those guys, like, like, every time you turn around, like, he's poking at you somehow. Like, he's <laughs> always right there all the time. But he's so small <laughs> if he just I had a little bit of size there. John's in class with me. I have him for geometry. He's a great kid. All right, a pass play out of the wing, and it's blown again. dead again. Hey, I don't know what this one is. I don't know either. Play. Flag on the play. They're going to talk about this. It's going to go against the Indians either way, no matter what. I can tell you that just by looking at it. Indians are working, motion 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 play. Indians working their way right out of Red Tornado territory. Indians. I'll bring up a third and 21. Ball now back in Red Tornado territory at the 49, we go. 28 we seconds. A little clock problem there to get that straightened out. Unfortunately, though, that means that the Indians are back in Red Tornado territory, back at the Red Tornado 49, and it's third and 21. Now, this is an offense does not, that, that does not have a lot of third and 21 plays no. in it. I'm going to tell you that just by watching them. No, they're actually back in their own territory. So it's, it's going to be an interesting call. They come out with Miller as the lone back here now. And it gives and to Miller, a, and it's right yep. at the Miller. It's a nice play. It really was. That's a good call by the Indians. As Miller takes it back into the, in the uh, Red Tornado territory down to the Red Tornado 43-yard line. Now, unfortunately, that's Wiggy. well short of the yeah, first down. First but down. A good but it play. gives them a little bit more room to punt the ball and put it down, yep. put it down field here. Yeah, this is where they like to get a, a, a good punt. Down. Now, actually, they have changed punters. And yes. Jonathan Dietrich has come in to punt the ball instead of tell it. So they have changed punters now. And the thing about Dietrich that'll stand out, he's wearing orange or yellow shoes down there. And it's blocked. Oh. And that was Jurasky. Jurasky not only, but how Jurasky blocked that was interesting. Bargeman picked it up, Demsko stopped him, but he drove the blocker into the punter. So that's an interesting way to do it. So they bring a new punter in and he gets it blocked. <laughs> So here we are. I swear there were two guys that Jurassic took there back there. Yeah, he just drove yeah, he drove yeah. everybody back into the punter. I mean, <laughs> oh my goodness. And so here we are at just under five minutes, and the Red Tornadoes have been carried this point by the defense and special teams. Now I'm sure the Red Tornado coaching staff is saying to itself now, now's the time we need to do something. Yeah. You know, we can't keep I mean, we've played the, the, the game's been ours the entire game. They've never threatened. They've never, they've barely been in our territory. And every time they get in there, they come back out again. Yet we have done nothing uh, to help ourselves offensively. Kwiatkowski now goes That's in motion. That's a wild cat. A, yep, that was. They, they actually centered the ball to Klingerman. And uh, he handed the ball to Jurasky, which is, and uh, who, look at the guy was it. There's Dembsko standing there. I'm telling you, Dembsko comes up to his waist when he's when we're standing together down there. But as Jurassic was coming towards him, he certainly didn't look like he was backing down at well, all. Well, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking he's saying to him, bring it on. Bring, yeah. I don't know that kid. I'm telling you, bring it on. Bring it on. He's, he is something, that kid. But there you saw something that we had talked about earlier, getting Jurassic involved. Right. If you're not going to use him as a pass blocker, get him the football. Do something. Now, we haven't seen the Wildcat not much. I mean, yeah, but, I mean, we haven't seen him much this year. So this might be the first time we're actually seeing this, where you see Klingerman. And now you have this exact same formation now. Again, mm -hmm. it's a high snap to Klingerman. Nah. And it went, goes, I mean, Klingerman gained about a yard on the play, but the snap was high. But the, the uh, Wildcat looks like it needs a little work. Well, not only that, uh, we're putting uh, Kiewikowski in that motion over to that, over to that position. And... Shemokin's looping into that direction. So they're bringing everybody, you know, defensively into that one zone. All right, so they come out of the Wildcat now. Jurasky comes out, and they put Farinato back in. Now Farinato will come out of the shotgun. I said, you'll see him do this, but not a lot tonight. Apparently, anyway, that's what they told us. And it's Klingerman. Klingerman trying to get around the end. He has Barishman leading him, and Klingerman makes a nice move along the sideline and picks up some big yardage in the Indian territory down at the Indian 40. 
Uh, 41 or so. Let's see where they yep. He went out of bounds over along the bench over there. Let me see where they finally place him out because it's never where I think it is. Mike Yuhan, number 52, makes the uh, tackle 41. out of bounds this time. So down to the 41-yard line, and now it's going to be third down and seven for the Red Tornadoes. You know, as, as much as we talked about a power backfield, if the Red Tornadoes had a bread and butter play this season, it's certainly that one. Yeah, yeah. All right, Tarnado will stay in that shotgun now. And again, Klingerman coming the other way, and they hand it to Klingerman. And Klingerman chews some yardage down yep. inside the 40, down to about the 39-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Pick up of maybe a yard and a half that time. And again, uh, looks like Mike Uha's getting off the bottom of that pop. No, I, Tony Anthony uh, Anonia is getting off number 22. Well, with the way the Red Tornado defense is playing, I, I'd almost thought that they might have taken a chance here to continue this drive. And however, it looks like they're going to punt it away again. Wow. That was a tough center snap there, but Vrano did a nice job. And look at this kick. Again, the Indians will be pinned in down at their five-yard line. Yep. They're having just terrible luck as far as field position goes here. The Red Tornadoes, are you, have we run for 11? I'm sorry? Oh, Klingerman. I'm sorry. Klingerman 11 times for 17 yards only. So they're doing a nice job on the Red Tornadoes leading rusher. And we say this time and time again, it, the lateral pursuit, pursuit for Shimokin is always year in and year out very good. We have a tough time yeah. getting to the outside. Uh, the Indians in their most dangerous position now as they're getting there on the five yard line as Jost goes under center. This time they hand it off, and this time Miller's, Miller's got, got some room. room. And Miller, a nice run by Draven Miller. Verano finally brings him down, but he takes it out to the 22 yard line. And just a straight dive play off tackle that time going to the left. And again, they uh, continue to run away from uh, Jurassic. First of 10, 2.57 remaining here in the first half of play. <laughs> oh, Get it out. Me. And the Red Tornado's up 6 nothing. Till Till it this Till time. It trying to get around the end until it won't do it. Duran brings Durand. him down. Picks up a couple on the play. You have to excuse me Maybe tonight. About I'm, two I'm that coming time. down with the disease Durand that everybody, I think, has after the, two solid Durand. weeks of rain and mist and everything else. You know, you, you, as you see on that play, when the Red Tornado defense looks good, it looks really good. They strung the play out. There were five or six red jerseys around there, but you know, just the same when they look bad, they look really bad. Well, again, they're they're great at giving up big plays. You right. know what I mean? That's how, that's how they get beat all the time. I mean, it's a big play. Pass play. Yost a deep drop. Yost throws it right in the middle, to, right in the middle to Miller. Miller coming out of the back. And Miller's going to pick up a first down at the 33-yard line. Barwicki and, and Danny Lesko making the tackle that time. It was really a nice job by Miller. He got he got up field, yes. and as the whole play was moving towards the sideline, the defense included, Miller kind of stopped and made his way back towards the center of the field, and Yost found him. He's a good-looking athlete. He really is. He's only a junior, so they'll see him back. And he's, I mean, true workhorse when you, when you think about it. Now they go into an I formation. And they give it to Miller. Miller no dropped the ball. The, the ball is on the ground again. How many times can they Oof. fumble the ball in one game? My goodness. And just as we wait to see the official sort <laughs> this the, out. Look, just look where the official is on this one here. He's crawled all the way down in the bottom. Tornadoes. And the Red Tornadoes have recovered the fumble. Again, a bad handoff. Lesko comes up with the fumble yep. recovery. But a bad handoff between Yost and Miller. And they do have a propensity to drop the ball on the field. They truly do. Tornadoes take it over at the Shimokin 34-yard line with a minute and 40 seconds left in the first half. Now, here's where you'd really like to do something if you're a red tornado. I mean, they sure. have done nothing offensively so far, but if you're going to do it, this would be the spot. Yeah, get a little momentum before you get into the, into the halftime locker room. Absolutely. You almost wonder if this isn't the best-case scenario for the red tornadoes where you're in a position where you can't afford to um, – to kind of just muddle around. You have to, right. with only a minute 40, you have to make a drive here. Right. Muddle around is a good word right now. Out of shotgun, this is a pure pass play. Farinato looks downfield. And that, that ball, ball either was got tipped. tipped. I was going to say, somebody it was. tipped that. 
Might have been Miller. I gotta give Klingerman credit for just giving Farinato the chance to get that ball out. He steps up and really picked up yep. a blitz. Hashuga, number 37, gets his hand up on the ball that time. Second down and 10 now for the Red Tornadoes. The ball's at the Indian 34-yard line. They're clinging to a 6-0 lead, which they got on a defensive touchdown on one of the many fumbles the Indians have done tonight. All right, he goes under center now. Klingerman, the lone back. This is a passing formation here. We'll see what the Red Tornadoes do. It is a pass. He's under heavy screen. pressure. Screen pass. And it's a screen pass to Kwiatkowski. Kwiatkowski's loose. And Kwiatkowski down to the 15-yard line. Nice touch by Farinato that time. Had to go up above at least three uh, defenders, uh, linemen coming in. One tried to make the interception, but... Uh, Dembsko and Taylor on the stop. But a nice play by the Red Tornadoes. A minute 25 remaining here in the first half. Ball right, right outside of the 15-yard line now. And they go into an eye formation with Byerschmidt in front of Klingerman. And it's Klingerman. Klingerman goes the other nice. way, and Klingerman gets some room there. And he's brought down by Hashuga. And I'll tell you what, he, it looked like he had a lot more room than, yes. than he did. Hashuga made a nice play. Jake Pick Jones, number 76 yards. for the Tornadoes, makes a great block on the uh, end that time that put a big hole in that line for Klingerman to go through. Yeah. Timeout Red Tornadoes at the 102 mark of the second quarter. Get a chance here to talk to you now. Again, the Red Tornadoes are playing this week in a playoff. I, I mean, you'll know by the time you, you see this broadcast where it'll be, but remember Supper Club, I'll tell you what, Supper Club last night, full house, about 84 people back there, Jose. I mean, what a night. And uh, had some, uh, some the rest of the senior band members were there and that, it's always such a such a treat to have those guys and girls show up but it'll be playoff time for supper club and that's when it really gets interesting so you want to make a point to show up at the back room matucci's about 6 15 we're out of there by 7 30 quarter to eight and uh everything it'll be playoff football for the red tornadoes will be talked about there and just really quickly before we get started back up here um, to go back to the screenplay, there's there are a few ways you can neutralize a blitz like that. We talk about the short passes, and you can try draws, but a screen's really a great way to do it. So that's just that's a fantastic play call by the Red Tornadoes in that situation. And a screen to a tight end, which you don't sure. you know, in high school you don't see that often. You don't do that a lot of times. The Red Tornadoes do a lot of tight end work. Now uh, again, an eye formation. Vrano comes in motion across it. It's a fake in the backfield, but he ran. Actually, that, that that's. The freshman that time made a freshman yep. mistake. Chase Tillett, but he ran right into him. He, he really didn't see where that pressure came from, and he ran right into him instead of sidestepping him. They were trying to block him, but he moved right to him. And that timeout again, the last timeout of the uh, half for the Red Tornadoes. 50 seconds left here. It'll be third down and third down and a bunch 17. here. I was going to say third down and a bunch. The ball is back at the 22-yard line. And that's and where the ball is is a, just a huge, huge point. Uh, just yeah. just the play, the play that Tillett makes there. It's it's always great lost, to have a big that was sack. Loss of eleven yards because right. well, the ball that, was on the eleven yard yeah. line that time. And I'm sure any coach will tell you we'll take an eleven yard sack oh. anytime we can get it. But in this situation, in a one score game, the Red Tornadoes look like they might have had some momentum, and you swing them back, and now they got third and long. All right, the Red Tornadoes will go in a shotgun here on the third and long. Byersman in the formation standing next to Farinato. Here come the Indians. Now Farinato, oh. a touch pass to Duran, and Duran went right through his arms. He was right there at the goal line. And I think he got a little surprised that it, that it, <laughs> it got to him like that. It was a real high pass. Yes, it was. And he yeah. just left it go through with him. And, and now look at Dembsko's mentioning that to him as he, as he goes <laughs> back to the huddle. <laughs> It's, you know, I love the I love the mic those kind of things to hear what they <laughs> say to each other. But he had I mean, there's no way that Dembsko could cover Durant. Probably thank Durant for dropping it. Yeah, I mean, there was no <laughs> other way around now, and he could not defend it. And actually, the ball was short, so yeah. Durant actually actually responded to it better than uh, Dembsko, than Dembsko did, did. But uh, just couldn't bring it in. So now it is fourth down for the Red Tornadoes. Farinato goes well, under you center. Think, you think they're bringing everybody here? Oh, that's and it's Duran, and this time Duran takes Look it to yeah. the 15, but it's not going to be enough, and the Red Tornadoes will turn the ball over. Dembsko, right all over yep. 
a, a great a, and a great grand. tackle too. Yep. And I'm that's another one I'm not entirely sure about, guys. They hit the Red Tomatoes have been in a situation fourth and long, and they punt it from the 30. Um, and fourth and long from the 22 here, and they opt to throw about a five yard in uh, or a short slant. Uh, with the way Verano's punting the ball, I think he could have pinned that ball inside the five yard line. <laughs> well, I don't think it's going to make much difference. There's 39 seconds left. This isn't a quick strike offense. We're going to have well, to no, say that for them. Well, with what we've seen with Yost, if he puts this football on the ground. The lone back is uh, Dietrich. Uh, Dietrich actually a senior. That's one of the few seniors in this Shemokin lineup. So, again, the future does look bright for them. Uh, he just took a knee. Uh, yeah, okay. That's what I was going to say. That, <laughs> well, I mean, for all the terrible things that have happened to them, I, I can see Absolutely. where they want to try to regroup here a little bit. They have just struggled with the, with the ball handling here. He'll take another knee, and that'll be uh, that'll be it for the first half of play here. And on the bright side, guys, you turn behind you. We have dill pickle chips tonight. <laughs> <laughs> See, I never saw that coming, did you? No, I didn't. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the first half of play here at the Silver Bowl in the Coal Bucket game. This for the Red Tornado 6. The Indian Zero will be back shortly with all of the stats. There is no such thing as a small distraction. A public service reminder from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Speak out against distracted driving at decidetodrive.org.
traditional facelift surgery requires an incision be made along the hairline near the temple and then goes around. Now the traditional facelift surgery, the traditional facelift surgery, the traditional, Miss Thompson, now the traditional facelift surgery requires an incision be made along the hairline. Anyone can wear a white coat, but not everyone is board certified in plastic surgery. Be safe. Be sure your doctor is a member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. Fame and the Eagles Club of Mont Carmel would like to welcome back the 2002 PIAA State Championship football team on this, the 10th anniversary. The 2000 team will be presented with Letterman jacket patches this evening, courtesy of the Red Tornado Touchdown Club football boosters. The patches were not available at the time of the, of the winning and were made available through the efforts of football parent, Mr. John Darrer. Replacements were designed and completed in time for tonight's celebration. The head coach was Mike Brennan, who is coaching his Blue Mountain Eagles against Google Haven this evening. Assistants present tonight include Bob Beach, Rob Verano, Bob Shikitano, and Ryan Geary. Michael Shikitano and Robbie Verano, current members of the 2012 football team, were managers for the 2012 team. The 2000 team competed at a 15 and 0 record on the way to the fifth modern day state championship. The title came with a hard fought 18-13 victory over Seton LaSalle at Hershey Park. And now, players, cheerleaders, and coaches with us tonight are seniors, Dave Brown, Mark Kovaleski, Mike Lashinsky, Steve Matsura, Juniors, Rick Greco, Jeff Hicks, Justin Leonovich, Marshall Meraki, Nate Morgan, Jonathan Novak, Sean Paul, Brian Polifka, John Skinner, Tim Wargo, and sophomores, Jason Boyer, Adam Croker, Alan Hometz, Josh Jaworski, Trey Savitsky, Drew Litkavage, Joe Daukas, freshman, and coaches, Mike Brennan, Paul Babinski, and Mike Kogut. And Ryan Geary. Ball boys were Dave Forgotch, Rob Verano, and Mike Chicatano. And the cheerleaders, Sam Avellino, Talia Barko Stefanovich, Jackie Hawkins, and Kristen Matsura. Behind the wheel, there is no such thing as a small distraction. A public service reminder from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Speak out against distracted driving at decidetodrive.org. Jose, if you want to do the stats with us, we'll give you a headphone because you might be the only guy that can read them. They're on the, I don't know where the <laughs> headphone is. No, he, he won't give you the headphone now. All right, we got them on the screen here, folks. So you can read them along. Jose will give you a little bit of comment on what we were looking at. And there's not a whole, not a whole lot to look at there, so go ahead, Jose. No, for, for Shemokin, 21 rushes for 52 yards, two of six passing for 45 and five first downs, but 97 yards in total offense. Defensively, we might think it's a good game, but 
offensively, we can't get, seem to get anything going. We have 16 rushes for minus four yards. And I cannot remember the last time that we were minus yardage on the ground at the half of any game. Four of 10 passing for 47. Three first downs, total offense 43. Now well, remember, you know, Jose, a team, this is a team that was doing 408 yards a couple of weeks ago at Norris Google. It's just amazing how different it looks right now. No, you're right. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to pick on anybody, but there's a whole lot of changes out there tonight. There's things going on, and we just can't seem to get anything connected. I guess we had an opportunity with the pass. Yep. yep. Dan had to put that score in. I hope that score doesn't come back to yeah. haunt I mean, us somewhere in this game. game. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you, you, you can't be very comfortable if you're a Red Tornado fan. So, I mean, it, it's just a, a very interesting offense. Now, again, I, and I, I'm thinking they, they need to get back to the basics on offense. They just got to sit down there and maybe go to an avalanche or something and just start running the ball. Give Jurowski the ball in the avalanche or whatever it's going to take. But well, it's funny, know. Warren. I, I stepped down at, at halftime and all the fans are down there are yelling, why don't we run a ball? Why don't we run a ball with all the experience, the senior line and, yeah. and everything else? Just, just round, let's just pound the ball. And, yeah. And uh, don't put the. Don't put the game in a freshman's right. hands. I think we need yeah. to. I think we need to run the ball. I really do. I think we need to get in a formation, like an I formation, just start pounding that ball. I really do. I think that's that's where we need to go in the second half. Now, we talked in the second half a little bit about you know maybe we might see Verano go back to take some of the pressure mm -hmm. off because again he would change that defense right away by by they would not have as much pressure at him because he would know what to do with it uh, uh, a little bit better than Farinato is, but Farinato again. Not playing that badly, but, I mean, not throwing the ball very well. I mean, that's, that's fairly obvious. He's having a tough time with the ball. But, again, you know, we keep throwing the ball all the time instead of just getting down there, hunkering down and making him comfortable. And then run the ball enough at times that when he, when he drops back, finally he sees an open receiver. Yeah, more you know. play action right. than yeah. the shotgun is what you're saying, probably. Yep. But uh, I'm sure the coaches have worked on it at halftime, and I'm sure they'll figure out what's going on here. And, once again, third quarter comes out important series for us offensively we have to establish that we can actually move the football and get the ball out of our territory because right. if it ends up being being played in our territory it can be a mm -hmm. different different game in this yeah, half absolutely all right we'll see how it goes now you know guys the, for Shimokin, this is a much easier view of it uh in Shimokin's case they got to keep the ball off the ground right that's because exactly. they have not been able to do that so far tonight it's just an amazing uh, fumbling motion here by the Indians, so they got to clean that up. But I mean, it's six nothing. They're they're yeah. in the game, and they're, yeah, again, they there's are. nothing. Again, they, they have not shown much offense. I mean, I'm not going to lie about that either. But they've shown more than we have. So <laughs> they've had, well, unfortunately for them, is they they've had terrible field position the whole time. You take a look at the uh, the way Mount Carmel has played defense all season long. They've given every team that we've played this year an opportunity to run a big play back on us, if not more than just one. All right, Dietrich lets it go. It goes down to, it's fumbled actually by Panko, picked up by Klingerman. And Klingerman's got himself a field of running now. He's going to get past the kicker, which he does. The kicker slowed him up enough. And then finally brought down there at the Number last 30. second by Zachary uh, Sante. Sante? Wayne. Yeah. Sente. That name caught me by surprise. Zach. I wasn't ready for that one. Uh, well, but the big run back by the Red Tenez. And again, but great field position in uh, Indian territory yeah. at the 34. Right. No, Warren, and that's that's exactly the point. This isn't new. This isn't that this field position is all of a sudden going to ignite the Red Tornado offense. They've had this before and squandered it. So I think what they need to see the difference in is the game plan. I think that'll that'll affect the way this drive turns out as opposed to the other nope. ones. Timeout, Shemokin already. No, that's it. Oh, wait, that's against. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's Shemokin. It's kind of odd you would take a timeout on the first play of the yep. second half. I'm not sure what they could have not had out there. Uh, but they waste a timeout, which in a tight game could come back to haunt them. Yeah, just, just something to think about that I, we hadn't discussed or considered at this point. But for one, tonight it seems like is the first night that it's really felt like football season. This is the first really cold night I think we've been out here, um, get, especially at home. You want me to hug you? No, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right. But but not just that. You look at the Red Tornado situation where they do have the freshman quarterback, and because of the rains and, and the wind and just the, the condition of the field, they only practice outside twice this week. Yeah, it's been a short week for both teams. You're right. It's a good point. And you did see there are, I mean, a couple, several times here tonight where people have fallen down on their own on the field. Mm -hmm. So I, I told you, I mean, the field cannot be in great, uh, uh, great condition when you had five inches of rain all week. And, and again, it rained most of the day today. We haven't seen the sun in so long. We're not sure we'd recognize it. 
All right, the Indians will, or the Red Tenants will come out on their first offensive series here of the second half. They come out in an I formation, and this looks like a run look when everybody, the tight end, everybody offside to start the second half. So a penalty, and it'll be first and 15. A, a little tough to hide when, you, when you're playing that <laughs> when you're, yeah, way when you're the out end, yeah. the outside out there and you take that half a step, you know. Yep. <clears throat> so they'll mark that off. It'll be first and 15. The ball will go back to the 39-yard line. And we'll try it again. Looked like the Red Tornadoes had set up a first man through dive on that one, try to catch the Indians off, off guard a little bit. Now they go into split backfield. They changed the formation after the penalty. So it's a split backfield now. And again, it's going to be Danny Lesko. Lesko. And Lesko powers his way Oof. down to about the 32-yard line. Look like 77 on the play. Yeah, that's there, who right? that uh, was. Uh, yeah, Glossick. Glossick holds on that time. I'll tell you what. Danny had a head of steam going through the line. And uh, he was looking to pick up some big yardage that time. That's just another... Another asset that Klingerman gives to your team is that when um, when he's in the backfield, he commands your focus at all times. All right, a quick pass play. It's Vrano. Vrano catches it and he drops it. So the receiver is a case of the dropsies here tonight for the Red Tornadoes, and nothing goes right offensively mm -hmm. for them tonight so far. Nice touch pass uh, uh, by Farinato also. That wasn't a hard pass. That was laid out there. Very nice for Vrano to run under and just catch it. You don't see that very often. No, you don't. <coughs> Third and nine now. And they stay in a split backfield. Very tight offense formation. And it's going to be Klingerman. Klingerman trying to get around the end, and Klingerman oh. will not pick up the first down. He's going to be he's going well, to be about three yards short, yeah. depending on where they. Uh, no, they spotted. They bring it back yeah, because not, he did he's not slip. That close. Yeah, he fell down on his own actually over yep. on the sideline. Now it's going to bring up a fourth down. Now it'll be interesting here. You know, the Red Tornadoes. It's funny how how coaches think of things. The Red Tornadoes would go for it, and they did it last week in in their own territory I in think the first period. Yeah. And now we've kicked in their territory every time we've kicked it. We've been in their territory, but and I now for the first time we go for it on fourth down. In the first half, seeing how the defense has played, I think he's going to go for it. Now it's fourth and five. The Indians all up alongside the line of scrimmage. And Klingerman, oh, Klingerman. is going to pick up the first down, I believe. He's down along the 21-yard line, which should be enough. Big surge that time on the right side of the offensive line. And Klinger just, Klingerman just followed that, that surge up through for a pickup of about six yards. Again, this is what they need to do. They can handle this. this that offensive line can do this. They've got to stay on the ground and pound. Well, uh, I hate to say that because it makes Jimmy look right, but what am I going to do? <laughs> but that, and that's in that situation, you notice who was on the end on that side that they ran to, the big 89, oh, utilizing yeah, yeah. him rather than just sending him out as a decoy. Quarterback sneak on the play. Farinato's still on his feet. He takes it inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. He stopped down there by... And again, uh, Glossick again, number 77. And there's a penalty, and that, I, I, knew, I knew that yeah. was coming. I, that was a bad mistake on the Shemokin side of the ball. I don't know why they did that. That's just a lack of composure, and that's a big one. It's, it's going to be a personal foul, and again, you just wonder why you do that. I think that's going to put the ball right around, possibly inside the 10. Unsportsmanlike conduct on number two on Shemokin. So a tough play by the Indians as they commit yeah, the personal right. foul Outside after down. the play was over, after the guy was on the ground. In fact, the guy was on the ground is when they committed it as they, were, they wouldn't let him up. And now it is going to be first or second down and – wait, second down. Wait, wait, wait. It's first and goal. They're inside the 10. I'm sorry. So it's first and goal from the 9. And it's going to be – I'm not sure who that was. I got to see who the ball carrier was there. Is that Lesko? I, I wasn't sure if it was yeah. him or not. Yeah, I think it is. Till it's on the on the top of the pile and on the bottom of the pile it down is. there is uh, Danny. 52 is Yuha. But it was Lesko, a nice one by Lesko down to the five. So it's second and goal from the five, a four-yard pickup. Up second and goal. and the, the fact is, with the, with the Red Tornado offensive line, 
the tight ends, the fullbacks, the quarterbacks, all positions. This is what the Red Tornadoes do best. They're a strong, smash-mouth football team. And again, they're, they're king on Klingerman. And of course, Danny's uh, carried the ball the last few times. Ball's, Ball's on the ground. Ball. He dropped the ball and, and it went into the end zone. Actually, it. the ball rolled all the way into the end zone. And they're going to say that it yeah. is. On the six-inch line. Or in the six Shemokin inch. ball. Yep. He, he didn't go into the end. Oh, my no. goodness. Look where the ball is, though. Oh, my I goodness. Think, the way the official's down there, I think he's trying to get a measurement if that's if any part of that ball is even the shadows touching the goal line. I, I'm not sure I ever saw a ball placed that close to the goal line ever. Look where that is. And, again, the, I mean, this is just this is the 10th game of the season, guys. You don't make mistakes like that. I think the only way that ball could get closer to the goal line is if he turned it sideways. I, I never saw a ball that close. I mean, that, that's truly amazing. They give it to Miller, and that's the smart thing to do. Miller's going to be bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. Yep. You probably get it to about the one. Uh, and that, again, that you don't want to do anything dumb down there. Apparently, especially the way they've handled the ball tonight, they got to be really careful. Yep. Vinny uh, Candelora makes the stop yeah. that time. And this is a situation where Coach Four may tell his quarterback, you go out there and you take a look and see where they're lined up, and if there's any space at all, keep it yourself and try to pick us up even three or four yards. All right, so he did get it out to the one. So we'll call it second down. It's actually second down and almost 10 still. There wasn't a whole lot of, a lot of movement on that play. And again, the same play. And again, Ooh, just bought I'll tell he you might what. be in the end zone. He that might be close. in the end zone. Let's see where Not they spot that. They're bringing him back out again. I don't Wow, I'll that tell you was what. close. That's Grieski getting off the bottom of the pile down there. He also looking at uh, for the Red Tornadoes down there. He had some help from uh, 57. For the Red Tornadoes down there, Barwicki. So it's third and ten now. Again, there was no movement on that nope. at all. And they have not been able to get out. Uh, they've not been able to get out to the one yet. And that was a quick stop, too, by Barwicki. Yeah, the Indians are opening up just enough of a hole that they can get out of the end zone. And then they're being met and their forward progress is stopped. Ooh. No, there's, they, they went offside. They have a, it's a mo I mean, the motion penalty means nothing there. It's going to be about three inches. You want to tell me why you would ever pitch the ball <laughs> in the I, end zone I'm not, like I'm that? not touching You're not this. Going I'm there? not touching this. I'm not. I, I'm, I mean, I've watched a lot of football in my day, and I don't pretend to be a coach or pretend to know what does or doesn't do, but I, I'm pretty sure I know what to do here. I mean, that, would, that should have been just a straight dive play. That was it. He was already in the back. Now, Ten, yeah, about yeah. eight yards in the, the back in the end zone. The other problem that's got to be in the back of the Indians' mind here is the punt game. Sure. They had the last one blocked. They changed punters, in fact, for the last one. And unless they move the ball on this down, they're going to be punting from the end line. And it's going to be a short so, punt. Yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be an ugly punt situation. So there's not a lot happening good for them, although they did stop the touchdown uh, by recovering the fumble. But now they're struggling here to get the ball any kind of movement. Yeah, quarterback, quarterback sneaked that keeper. time. and. Again, he, I don't think he picked up nope. any yardage. I mean, he's back to the exact same line of scrimmage, and now they're going to be kicking, and we'll see who they put in to kick. And just real quickly, guys, to go back to the to the, to the the pitch play, the Indians were fortunate that they had been called for motion because Jurassic was six yards into the end zone yep. when they blew that play dead. That would have been a safety. I'm not really sure who called that, to tell you the truth. i gotta, I got to sometimes worry. All right, it will be, it will be uh, till it. 8-9 on the edge. And Tillett is standing at the, he's, his foot is right inside the end line, and now a penalty. Now we have a little bit of a shoving match. There is Jurasky, and they were trying to block it. That's exactly what they were doing. Jurasky coming off the edge. The penalty, I mean, if it goes against the Indians, it won't make any difference whatsoever because you can't move the ball any further back. If it I mean, goes against the Red Tornadoes. Back. It's way back here, though. I don't understand. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're calling on this. Well, let's see. He's going to come over here and show us in a minute here, and it's going to be a <laughs> illegal, substitution, illegal substitution, Mount Carmel. That's going to give the Indians a little breathing room to get this punt off. Yeah, and another mistake, though. But And now they bring, after he blocked the punt and was going to blow that punt up as well, they're going to bring Jurasky off the field and not give him a shot to run at this when well, the Indians I think punt they, from their end zone. I think they want him to calm down a little bit. Why? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tillett's got some time now, and he kicks it again. This time it's a high kick, and he actually kicked it right Gilder. to Gilder. Gilder's going to come along the Red Tornado sideline, and he'll be brought down. Balls and he falls on ball. the ground. Falls on the ground at the 31-yard line. And
Record for, for fumbles. Could be that. Could be that. This is just Shemokin Shemokin ball. ball. They came up with the, with the fumble. Yep. Fumble on the punt return. Officials rule Shemokin has recovered at the 32-yard line. All right, first and 10 Indians from their own 32-yard line. And the, the perilous thing here for the Red Tornadoes is that if you do give up this big play with what your offense have done, you're an extra point away from being behind oh, yeah. in this football game. I mean, this isn't where if you give up a score, all of a sudden it's 0-0 zero, zero again. No, you, you failed to convert the extra point, so you'll be on the, on the losing end. And the Red Tornadoes are having questions about their defensive setup here. Trayvon White is asking the question whether he should be in there. I know he is in there, so I think they're safe with that. And it's going to be a pass play downfield, and it's intercepted, intercepted by Duran at the 49-yard line. Number 13 intercepting that pass for the Red Tornadoes, Elijah Duran. Oh, my goodness. Ball is on the 49-yard line of the... Area. Who's he going to? Tyler Forbes? You Number 13, me, I think. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, 13 was the guy he was trying to hit down there. Forbes, the sophomore. So they caught the ball back up. It's at the 49-yard line. Jurassic coming off the field again. Farinato goes under center. He's a split backfield, and it's Klingerman. And Klingerman gets... Hit and right in the backfield, no gain on the play nope. whatsoever. Now the fact the fact that Klingerman um, that he lost the football down near the goal line should not take away the rest of that drive and the success that the Red Tornadoes had with the package they were running, specifically staying behind Jurasky. And again, eight nine on the sidelines. Six oh five here in the third quarter, folks. It's a cold mask. bucket game, a face mask call against the uh, Indians. It'll be one of those five yarders, I believe. Uh, the Red Tornadoes lead six nothing on a defensive touchdown by Duran. There has been absolutely no offense by either side in nope. this game. Can you actually win the game in negative yardage? Well. I think the winner of this game is going to be the one who doesn't fumble the ball as much. As I'm much not sure where that's going to end up either. So, yeah, all, right. all right, it's first down and five now. The ball at the uh, Indian 44, and Farinato was in the shotgun, and he gives it to Klingerman. Actually, Klingerman made a nice move, and Klingerman. Oh, another nice move. He's brought down, finally down there by uh, uh, Eric 24. Taylor. 24 was the guy that brought it down in the end. He got hit in the backfield, though, and made a nice uh, move to get away from it. And he's finally stopped at the 35-yard line, so it will be first and 10 Red Tornadoes from there. Certainly all Klingerman on that play. He made it happen by yeah, himself. He did. See the penetration, though. The penetration the Indians have on, on, the, on the play all the time, you're always trying to get around the guy in your own backfield first. All right, shotgun for Farinato. Klingerman again. No. And Klingerman is going to be buried down there. And Anthony that is uh, Anonia. Anonia. What a play by, by Anonia. But you've got to wonder who's and blocking who there now. And again, the previous play where, the, where Klingerman was able to break it was because he was able to make a man miss. So you come out with the same formation and the same play call, and I assume that you're just banking on Klingerman making those guys miss five yards deep in the backfield. 4.55 and counting in the third quarter. Very quick game, thankfully. Hmm, not sure how much you could sit through in a game like this. <laughs> All right, under center now, Farinato goes. It's second down and 12. And it's Slingerman again. And Klingerman goes upfield, but will gain very little yardage. He's back to the, he's back to the line of scrimmage at the 35-yard line, where it'll be third and 10. And only getting up off the uh, bottom that time. Number 22. Anthony Anoya with number 10. Julian Dietrich. Does he say, how does he say, is it Anonia or Anoya? Anonia. Anonia. And Julian Dietrich, number 10, making a stop. All right, Jurowski goes back into the lineup. We'll see where he, he shows up at here. He'll be the tight end in the slot position. He's on the left side of the formation. 
Farinato rolls out. He's under pressure, under pressure, and Farinato goes down. down. Big loss back to the 42-yard line. And I'm just, I'm not quite certain what's going on for the Red Tornadoes offensively. Mike Uha makes the initial hit on Farinato that time. You know, again, the, you know, the strength of this team was its offensive line, or that's what we were told all the time, but it doesn't, last week and this week, that's not where it's at. And now the Red Tornadoes will punt. Tillett and uh, Burns are back to receive the punt. <coughs> Tillett from the six. Tillett made a nice move, and Tillett's on his way up the sideline. Nice run by Tillett, finally brought down. It's going to be a 31. No, actually, I think it was, it was a 31 or 56. I think it was 56. Austin Jurassic, I thought, made the play. But we'll give uh, Lesko a little bit of help on that yep. one, too. But a nice run back by Tillett. Yeah, and that's a play where Tillett, Tillett looks like the hero because he feels the ball, makes a nice move, and gets out to the 31. But in all seriousness, with the way that ball was traveling, that would have went into the end zone had he let it go. <coughs> So a high risk, high reward there, play there by Tillett. First and ten, All right, 303 in the third right, quarter. 6 0 Red Tornadoes, the Indians are on offense. And it goes right up the middle. And, and it goes, goes nowhere. nowhere. That is number 10, Dietrich. And he, I mean, he just Vinny. He ran into Vinny. Yes, he did. Stopped Vinny. immediately. Vinny's playing like a man possessed. Yeah. Byersman also on the hit down there, but. Uh, Candelora on the stop. It's tough running up the middle on the red tornadoes. It has that's been the real oh, yeah. strength. And unfortunately for the Indians, that's really what they do. They run up the middle. They don't get try to get outside much. Pass play. A hold on Jurassic. I'm not sure how anybody didn't see that. And it's going to be nice broken up play by Duran. Nice play by Duran. Uh, Ryan Wilk was the intended receiver. The hold on Jurassic could not have been plainer if you tried. <laughs> well, uh, but we're not going to see a call on that one. <laughs> Brings up a third and ten. All right, it is third down and 10 now for the Indians. He'll go into an I formation now. I'm seeing the tailback is a different, uh, Burns. tailback is Burns, it's a flea flicker. Burns is back to, oh, he threw it right to Gilger, Gilger. and Gilger's gonna take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Red <laughs> Tornadoes. Another defensive touchdown for the Red Tornadoes, but he threw it right at him. Oh my goodness gracious. We might have, hold on there. No, we don't. That, Oof. look at, I don't know if you see the replay. I mean, it could, no one else could have caught it, but he threw it right at him. Now he was trying to hit Yost. He's trying to hit the quarterback, but look at the pass play. Yeah. I mean, right to Gilger. There was no other way. So a second defensive touchdown in the game, and the Red Tornadoes are up 12-0 are up now at the 205 mark, and they're going to go for two. I think I heard a sigh of relief along the whole <laughs> sidelines down here. Oh my goodness, what a game this is. This was this is a game you want to forget when it's over, whoever wins it. All right, Klingerman now. Jurassic goes in motion across the formation. It's Klingerman gonna follow him, and Klingerman I think got it in. in. He gets did. In Klingerman zone. gets into the end zone for the two-point conversion at the 205 mark. It's 14-0. Red Tornadoes. Now, now we have Jose here, and so I'm curious if, if say, this ended up being the final score, 14 nothing Red Tornadoes. I wonder when the last time Mount Carmel won a game without scoring an offensive touchdown. Right, the Red Number Tornadoes 26. with a 14-0 lead, 2.05 remaining in the third quarter, and they have 73 yards of total offense. Think about that, folks. Wow. All right, Langton in the kickoff. 
I love this this lineup here, the three four five lineup. You, you can't go wrong with that lineup all the time. Although I think they took five out of there now. Yeah, it's only three four. And it's going to go down to uh, Burns. Burns comes up for the run. Actually, the best hit he took was from his own guy <laughs> as he tried to <laughs> cut back. Uh, he'll be stopped at the 32-yard line or so. It'll be first and 10 from the 32. Yeah, great field position by Indian standards by, tonight. By the standards of the show Indians tonight, yeah, they have had, I mean, they have had terrible field position. I will say that for them. They have been stuck back at their own goal line most of the evening. All right. Trying to get Dembsko in the right spot yeah. there. <laughs> he finally whispers in his ear as to where he was going to be there. And he goes in motion. And they give he it to gets Dembsko, the ball. And Dembsko is knocked down by Grayeski in the backfield. Before he ever got a step after he got the handoff, Grayeski came out of that nose guard position and buried him. A loss on the play at second down. Loss of two, second down and 12. So actually loss of three, second down and 13 now for the Indians. Now you see the last uh, few series of downs here, Shemokin has gone away from Miller and Tillett in the backfield and yeah. gone with the smaller. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like they might be going, trying to get a little more speed is what, yeah. what I'm, I'm guessing they're trying to do there. Because, I mean, look at Burns. Now, Burns is a freshman. He's 5'4", 150 pounds, and he's tailback, and he has the ball, and he is going to be dropped for another two or three yard loss. Grayeski once again brings him down. So Grayeski right now having his way with the center from the Indians, and they can go nowhere. You know, I, I wonder, the, the Indians may not have had a whole lot of success throwing the football down the field, but it was, albeit small, it was the only success that they've had offensively. So I wonder if at some point Coach Floor will try and open up his offense in any way he can to make something happen. All right, draw uh, play. A draw play down there to uh, actually looked like he had a lot of a lot of room to run, and it closed up really quickly. Candelora, that was Dietrich on the carry, but Candelora finished that one off pretty quickly, and it's fourth down and about 15 or 14, so it'll be a punt situation for the Indians. Tillett will come in and do the punting for them. We're inside of 10 seconds here of the third quarter. I do not believe they're going to snap no. the ball. They're not. So that will be the end. No, oh, they, they did snap Sorry. it. With one second left, they snapped it. Nice kick this time down to the 40-yard line as Gilger eludes the first couple of guys. Gilger's still on his feet, and Gilger brought that hard by Eric Taylor. But he's up at the 49-yard line. That is the end of the third quarter of play with the score of the Red Tornadoes. 14. And the Indian zero gives me a chance to thank everybody at Boyer's Food Market. Uh, John up here, uh, what, what a hoagie tray we had tonight, folks, from uh, Boyer's. John and Mike. And uh, we also had some uh, uh, macaroni, and macaroni and cheese. Yeah, macaroni and cheese. The only thing we didn't have was cups. Unfortunately, we had a drink out of the palm of our hands for the iced tea. But, again, thank you to Boyer's again. Uh, another great season of food here in the press box. And again, we always talk about what a great group they are, how community minded they are when they, and they do a lot of things in the community that, that if you, if you're involved, you'll see. And the fact that they also let us park there every week is yeah, nice too. True. So uh, again, thanks to, to, to John and Mike. And John really went out of his way. He was, he was pretty proud of that hoagie train. He should have been. It was a great, I mean, well, you can tell it was great because there's <laughs> people are eating that fake lettuce right now. It's about the only <laughs> thing left there. There's fake lettuce. Well, whatever that is, I don't know. It's just, I mean, I actually eat everything. It doesn't matter to me, but I'm not always sure what it is. I got to keep my strength up. All right. Now the Red Tornadoes will go into an I formation here. They have Byerschmidt in front of Klingerman here. They're on their own side of the ball on the 49 yard line. to get everybody everybody set here and they now they're finally ready to go. It is Byersman on a quick opener. Byersman brought down uh, hit first by Hashuga. 
A couple of other guys were going to help out down there. It looks like 52 down there, and I, I should have known better, but Yuha's in on yep. the stop, too. Yuha's playing a great game, him and yeah, Nushuga. Yeah. Well, and they're, and they're really, yes. I mean, they're the teeth of that defense. They truly are, those two guys. And, and we knew that uh, from last year. And Miller playing a great game. Yeah, Miller's the other guy. Miller moves around a lot. You yep. see, I mean, he's, he's, never, he's not in the same spot. Uh, and here they come, a full-out blitz. It's Klingerman, and Klingerman goes away from the blitz. And what a nice play down there. I'll tell you what, Bloom may have saved the touchdown. Made a nice uh, stop on Klingerman. Now, Klingerman is very close to the first down. He's down along the 42-yard line. They're looking at it. They'll come up a little short, so it'll be third down and less than one uh, for the Red Tornadoes. Duran comes out, hobbled, and Jurasky goes into the lineup. Uh, now they got Trayvon White, White coming out, so coming they have too out. many guys in there. Now, I'm wondering, though, with Duran that came out, I hope they, I hope they counted everybody on the way that one looked there. You always get nervous when that happens. Now, they're also going to have to get this thing moving a little bit here. And they go offside. So, uh, motion penalty against the Red Tornadoes. So, instead of third and less than one, it'll be third and a little less than five. And you saw in that situation, at least in a short yard <laughs> situation, they did finally bring Jurassic into to shore up that side of the offensive line, but it's going to be a little, a little bit more of an effort to pick up the first down now. I guess it, I, I probably should have to remind everybody that both of these teams are playoff bound. <laughs> now, why would you have to <laughs> remind anyone? Because I'm, I'm getting a little concerned myself here. <laughs> All right, the Indians again. Look at the pressure from the Indians. It's going to be Klingerman, and now he has some room. Outside. Klingerman's got a lot of room, and Klingerman almost squirts through. He's finally stopped yeah, by yeah, Tillett, yeah, but yeah, a bigger yeah. run down than a Shemokin 22-yard line. Brano, of course, makes a great uh, block on Preston Burns downfield. The timeout on the field is Shikitano, number 66, is down on the play. So Mike Shikitani, you, know, you remember he got hurt in the first game of the season, in the first half of the season. Uh, he is he wears two braces on his knee, the, the one that he hurt and the other one, so because he favors that one a little bit now. So hopefully this is nothing serious. Now, I know he was in a lot of pain last week uh, towards the end of the game. Uh, what he's not able to do is go both ways anymore. That's, that's unfortunate for him because yeah. uh, he plays very well on both sides of the ball, but uh, it looks like... Uh, he will not be back into the game, just by the way they're looking at him. So there's 10-19 remaining in the ball game here. Again, it's the cold bucket game, uh, the longest running uh, trophy game in uh, Pennsylvania high school. Uh, Mike gets up and walks off, so I was premature on that one, and I should have known better because with Mike, <laughs> as, you know, I always it could be Mike, hanging. Yeah, he's one of the toughest guys. You know, I mean, just one of. The, and look, who's waiting for him? His grand grandfather waiting him at the at the. And you know what is? All of us think, you know, there's, he's going to give him a hug. His grandfather's going to say, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Get back in there. What are you doing? <laughs> Big Mike was raised the right way <laughs> by Tony. But he's just a great kid. You've got to give him a lot of credit for playing in the pain that he has all season. It's his senior year. He's a four-year starter. And he changed positions this year, more interesting than anything else, and had a great season. So... It's first and ten, it's Byerschmidt, and Byerschmidt trying to find the edge, and he's going to pick up about five yards on the play as the Red Tornadoes now beginning to assert themselves a little bit on offense, uh, which they have not done all game. This is their first real sustained drive. Well, I, I think some of the changeup was uh, everybody's uh, king on Klingerman, and we're giving it to Lesko, we're giving it to uh, Byerschmidt, and I think that's working right at this point. Who's, who's in for Shikitano? can you tell? Kaminsky. All right, so Kaminsky, uh, he's what, 76 over there? 51. Or fi I'm sorry, 54. 54 he's over this sorry. side. I'm sorry, 54. I'm sorry. I got my right and left mixed up there. Byerschmidt again. He kicks it outside, and Byerschmidt, a nice tackle down there by Dembsko. Yep. I'll tell you what, Byerschmidt had some room, and but uh, Dembsko, and that is a little bit of a. Real quick. Yeah, a little bit of a scuffle going on down there. And that's, and that's the difference between a Byerschmidt and a Klingerman. In, the, in that case, first of all, they both run behind Jurasky on that side, using Eric right. to get the corner. And Byersman, not the speedster that Klingerman is, there was room to the outside where Klingerman could have got that corner. Bobby saw that he wasn't going to get it and decided, I'm going to pick up as many yards as I can to make it a manageable third down. 
All right, it's going to bring up third down and five. The ball down at the Shemokin Indian 17-yard line. So there'll be two plays to pick up the first down here for the Red Tornadoes. They're in a split backfield. They Pass fake it. He there. looks downfield. He actually had the guy open early, and now Verano falls yep. down because he was tripped up down there by Burns. And again, Passing that was not Burns. that was not a flagrant no, foul by no. Burns by any by any. Uh, Imagine what happened was Rano got separation from Burns. He was trying to catch up, and he took that big step, and he caught his heel and knocked him down. But it's an interference penalty against the Indians, unfortunately, either way. And it happened. It actually happened down along the three-yard line is where the penalty fell. But they're going to mark it off here. It'll be a 10-yarder, I guess. So they'll mark it off from, what's that? Oh, half the distance. Never mind. All right. And oh, they, okay, yeah, they were, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see where they were. So they do, it goes down inside the 10 down to the 8-yard line where it will be first and goal from the 8. We're going to go into a into a I formation. You got Lesko now in front of Klingerman. They're inside the 10 at the 8 on a first down, and we bring all the pressure for the Indians, and huh? this time they're going to get Klingerman as they, get, they, they blitzed off the side that he ran to that time. He ran right into Miller. Miller, yeah. Miller uh, came around from the outside and makes a tackle. Some help down there by, I, I, I was going to say nine, but there's no nine on the, is there a nine on the, on the, on the field? field? I wasn't sure if that was nine or something else. I don't see a nine on the rod, no. so it probably wasn't. And you saw, you saw there 54, Kaminsky making his way out, which means, which means 66, Chikatano is back in yeah, there. Yeah, he came back in right away. So that's great news for both us and for Mike. <clears throat> All right, there was probably about a, well, I'm going to say probably a yard loss, but not quite that much. But it's going to be second and a long eight uh, for the touchdown. And this time they pitch it to Klingerman, and Klingerman follows the block. But I'll tell you mm -hmm. what, the guy that really blew that up mm -hmm. down there is going to be Miller. Miller again. Yeah, Miller got hit hard, but he You're forced Klingerman to change tackle. the trajectory of that run a little yep. bit and actually picked up nothing on the play. It's third down and goal from the eight. Miller's a tough kid, I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, he is. Just I like him. just one heck of a game tonight. Yeah, I like him. And as you said, the Indians have been in a lot of games like this because of kids like Miller on the defensive side yeah. of the ball. Yeah, their defense, really their strength, obviously. Uh, they got some tough kids. Yuha, Miller, uh, Shuga, I mean, they got some Dembsko. They got some tough kids playing out there. All right, a split backfield now on the third down, and it's going to be a pass play. And he's oh, got a guy wide oh. open. Jurowski uh, ran hit, into Miller. They yep. hit each other at the goal line. Oh, and Jurowski went down. He wants a penalty, drag. but they're going to say no. now that. And, and actually, you know, again, look at the play here. On the, uh, You see the play coming up here. A drag play coming across from right to left. They just ran left. into each other. I mean, they ran into each other at the goal line, and uh, Jurowski went down. So it's fourth and goal now from the eight. You don't see that very often. No, either, you <laughs> don't. <laughs> and I'm a lot of things I'm you haven't seen tonight that you, <laughs> that you saw. Unfortunately, Jurassic would have been wide open on that play. Yeah, yeah, well, he would have. Yeah, they didn't see what he was no. doing. Because actually, Miller was going the other way. He wasn't even following him. Another pass play. They lob it into the end zone for Vrana. Now, look how many he got now. Penalty, that will be a penalty yeah, flag right there. there. There it is. You saw the penalty. Now, we threw that at Verano. There are four yeah, yeah, Indians yeah. with him in the corner of the end zone. And he was and they still out. And they yeah. still locked him down. So, it'll be down to the one-yard line now. Or the four. Is this half? The, half. Why, why can't we go to the one? I don't like you here. I don't, I don't like him when you know stuff that I don't. But you're right. It's going to go half. You're and, right. And so, they put it down to the four. It's first and goal. In that situation, the, the Indians have so many guys around Verano. How would you the get, how would you get it down to, to the one? It. What would you have to do to be at the one? First and goal from the four. All right, four-yard line, first and goal. 6.47 remaining in the ball game. The Red Tornadoes are up 14-0 to go in an I formation, and now they put Klingerman in motion. It's Lesko, and Lesko gets the ball, and Lesko bulls his way. A and penalty a flag in the middle holding. of that. Lesko hey, pulled his way into the end zone. Holding on by the tornadoes. But it'll come back. Nobody told Lesko that yet because <laughs> he's pretty worked up over it. But now he's looking. Now he just found out. He's like, ah. But that's coming back. That was right in the middle of the play uh, also. And you know what? I'm not surprised at all by this. 
They're really not. You know, you ever, you guys, you guys see that movie Men in Black? You ever see that movie? Yeah. yeah. This is the kind of game when it's over that you hope they hold up that thing in front of you and <laughs> the click neuralizer. it. And yeah, and your memory's gone. <laughs> nobody wants to remember this game. I'm telling you, nobody. Neither side wants to remember this. And that's and that's the shame about this is that both of these teams are gonna. Well, one of these teams is gonna go home tonight excited. Time out. That either, that either they kept the coal bucket or won it for their for their town. But Time you're going shoot. into the playoffs next week. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the worst part. On, I mean. After a performance like this, and that's that goes for both teams, the winning side and the losing side, certainly not as sharp as you'd like to be. No. Well, listen, it, here we go. This is WKMC Seniors. This is their last game uh, being broadcast from the Silver Bowl for WKMC TV. This is one of the largest uh, senior classes since Mr. McPhee has taken over in 1999. Oof. Yep. Uh, giving us one year, Brianna Latovich. Giving us one year, Alyssa uh, Belsky. She's also a cheerleader. One year, Tara Demko. Three years, Joe Zanella. Five years, Eric Jurasky. He does basketball and MCA Live in the morning. Uh, six years, or four years, Justin Scavery. He's at the cross country uh, state meet tonight. Uh, six years, Cassie Troutman. And six years, Nicole Purcell. Yeah, it's been a great crew, it really has. Got to know these kids. It, it's always a shame to see them leave, but you know when they leave, They've got all the tools to be successful when they come out of this program. And so many of them have gone on and used this program uh, to advance themselves. All right. A draw play to Klingerman. He has a lot of room. Klingerman's inside the five, and Klingerman gets back, bashed down that time at the uh, three-yard line. And who hit him? Was that, uh, getting was that, up uh, there. That looks like Miller. Was, that, was he the guy that hit him, though, or yeah, was it the Draven. other guy? Draven Miller makes the big hit what right a hit. there. Right uh, inside the five. It'll be second and goal from in there. And I'll tell you what, Klingerman jumped right back up again. And just just one last time really quickly to go back to the to the TV studio and the, and the crew. The product they put out is unbelievable. Despite I mean, us. It's, despite us, sure. <laughs> oh, trust me. When people turn in on Wednesday night, they're not looking for us. They're looking for the great camera angles, they're the not. graphics. No. Oh, my goodness. Hate That's to burst shocking. your bubble. Let's go. Lesko drives his way down to about the two-yard line. And number 77, uh, Glossick, <laughs> uh, makes a tackle that time. All right, third and goal now. Ball at the four-yard line. The Retinators in no particular hurry to do anything right now. The, the game clock down to 532 remaining. They're up 14-0. They go back on an I formation now with Lesko in front of Klingerman. And it's a it's a keeper, keeper by the quarterback, touchdown. Farinato. And I'll tell you what, Delbo yes. and Nicola bulldozed him into the end zone. He followed the two of them. Nobody touched them. What a block by the two of them. And it's uh, 20 to nothing oh. now in favor oh, of the Red Tornadoes. We got a flag on the play, probably celebrating. I don't know if we were celebrating or not. Uh, there was some sort of extracurricular activity. going to go against, well, he called it, but he didn't say who it was against, so we got to guess that one. See which way he walks. Well, that might be on the kickoff. Wow. Uh -huh. That was a dead, yes, that's sir. a dead ball foul, so here it is. He's going to show us who it was now. Uh, that's against the Red Tornadoes. I don't know what what was that called? Not sportsman like. No, no, but what was the last part? The, the, was that, oh, that's I don't what know. he meant. The kickoff, I guess. Yeah, that many he's going to assess it on the kickoff. Okay. Yeah, it was a dead ball foul because the yeah. touchdown was yeah. hard already. Right, when he pointed like I never saw him do that, but that point means that, he, that it's not going to be assessed on this play. All right, Verano in to attempt the extra point out of Farinato's hold. Ball's down. Verano puts it up, and this time he puts it through. 21-0 Red Tornadoes at the 5.09 mark of the ball game, the cold bucket game between these two teams. Now, Warren here, I have a question for you, Wayne, either of you. As we, as the Red Tornadoes jostle for seeding at this point, 
and, and points are allotted. Are any of those points based on a final score? Is no. Uh -uh. No. No. It's it's a win or a loss. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it's based on uh, it's based on the on the on the whether you're a triple A or a or double, double A. a. It's based sure, on those right. kind of things, and it's based Absolutely. on their record right. if they're bringing wins with them or not. Sure. But the score, no. Yeah, I mean it comes in only comes into play if you're deciding it on a head-to-head -head competition okay. somehow on a tie. All right, eleven plays, fifty-one yards, six minutes and fifty-one seconds. The all-time offensive drive of the evening by either team <laughs> <laughs> was there right in front of you, folks. That was the longest one there was. Most of it on the ground. Most of it by penalties, too. Yeah, man. Now they're going to mark. They're marking off that penalty that happened down after the touchdown. So we're going to be kicking off from the 25-yard line for uh, the Langton. The 15-yard penalty... And as, as much as we've discussed the offensive side of this game and, the way, and it's not the way you want to enter the playoffs, if the Red Tornadoes can keep a, a zero on the scoreboard for the Indians, that'll certainly be the way they like their defense to enter yeah. the playoffs. Yeah. yeah, I mean, defensively, yeah, they got to be really happy. They, they do. They played very well defensively tonight. Again, it's just, it's just a kind of a really plain... Shemokin offense, you know what I mean? Not yeah. a very sophisticated offense by any means. And, and really, you see a lack of speed on that, on that offense that they can't get around the edge much. Ball goes down to about the 30-yard line where it's taken by Preston Burns. Oof. And Burns along the sideline, a nice run by Burns. He's finally caught down there by Kariki. But he takes it in the Red Tornado territory down at the Red Tornado 36 or 7-yard line. So a nice run by Burns. Dang, Burns can like disappear on you at five foot four. You got to find out where he is all yeah. the time. He just a, he was a purple blur on that play. Yeah, he, now I just got done saying not a lot of speed, but I take that back because he's got some there. <laughs> he he made it. Once he got it himself turned there, he was rolling. All right, first and ten for the Indians now. Five minutes remaining. They got to do something right now if they're going to try to get back in this football game. And this is going to be a fake play. Passes it over to middle, and he finds his man, Forbes. And Forbes is free all the way down to the 12-yard line, so they took my advice. He stopped down there finally by uh, Lesko. But we saw that play almost work the first time in the first yeah. half, and this time Yost was able to connect with them and a big play. So it's a first down now from the, let's say, the 12-yard line. First and 10 from the 12 for the end. It's their deepest penetration of the entire evening. All set up by Burns' return. Now they go into an I formation. Till it goes in motion across the formation. And it goes, it was a fake to Miller, goes into the end zone, but Oof. that time he overthrew his Tillett. Now a, a late penalty, and I believe that late penalty is going to involve knocking the quarterback yep, down. Yep, that is. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where that one's heading. So another dumb penalty by the Red Tornadoes roughing the passer. I just don't, I just, I cannot I get my arms that. around the lack of discipline. I just yeah. can't. It's just a lack of discipline. It just is. It's just, just truly an interesting season. It really has been. All right, so the ball now goes down to the right around the five, which is, okay, let's say the six. six. So the six-yard line, it's, it's going to be first. It's actually going to be first down and, and goal. goal. Yeah, it's first and goal from well, they have it, it's first and goal from outside. Oh, it's the six-yard line, not the six. four. Okay, first, first and goal six. from the six. All right. And the Shemokin Indians finally are threatening. They'll stay in the eye formation. Miller is the uh, tailback in this formation, and Miller gets the ball, and Miller is going to be dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Lesko's getting off the bottom of the pile down there. He had some help by Jurasky, and it's going to be second and goal from the exact same spot. The game brings up a second and six. The Red Tornadoes find himself in this position with their backs against their own goal line through no fault but their own. Uh, the, the two unsportsmanlike uh, dead ball fouls 
really um, really helping this Indian offense. Yost throws it, and it's a touchdown. touchdown. Hit a, a slant pattern. Let me see who gets off the bottom. I'm trying to see who he hit. Gilt. That's Tillett. Uh, Tillett. Tillett. Yep. Nice pass play by Yost to Tillett. And the Indians are on the scoreboard. It's 21 6 at the 343 mark of the fourth quarter. In the attempt, the extra point will be Golden Shoes, Jonathan Dietrich. I tell you what, those shoes stick out. Uh, anywhere you're at, you can see those shoes. I don't know where he got them at, but he's making a statement. <laughs> Dietrich puts it up, and it will be good. good. It's 21-7. Red Tornado. And I think that's, that tonight, even just the last two drives, offensively and defensively, have shown how much the Red Tornadoes can be Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, you go down the field, you chew off the clock, you pound the football, you score the touchdown. As soon as you do, you get the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, you give up the big return, a quick big play, and all of a sudden your shutout's gone that you worked so hard yeah. for through the first three and a half quarters. Shemokin has rushed the uh, ball 29 times tonight for 47 yards. Uh, so far, they're four of 12 for 76 yards in the air. So not a ton of offense by either uh, group here tonight. Now, Langton goes deep by himself. Now, we're, we're sort of looking for an onside kick here. Okay, all right, all right. All right, Jonathan. Jonathan's a, one of the rare seniors on this team, the kicker. So they line up for the onside uh, kick. I keep looking at those shoes, and I'm starting to wonder if those aren't a, a kicker cleat. Well, I don't know what a kicker cleat is. The Red Tornadoes will field the ball. That's Verano. Caught the ball in midair. It's Red Tornado ball at the 46-yard line, first and 10. What are kicker cleats? I just assumed there was a pair of kicker cleats. <laughs> Specialized kicking cleats. Look at the shape of them. They're kind of... Kicker cleats. They're kind of long. I believe his immature thumbs are starting to affect <laughs> his uh, train of thought here. Might be this cold. I use soccer shoes. That's cleats. That's what I use. I wonder if he's a soccer player. I don't, you know, I don't they know if he be. is or not. But you're down there. You should know whether he is or not. Yeah, That's what we bring you to this game for, so you know all the other guys. All right, first and ten, Red Tornadoes. And it's going to be Byershman. And Byershman will pick up a couple of yards on the play. He stopped. Uh, very quickly down there, and we'll see him get off. There's still another rumble going on at the yeah. bottom of the pile down there. Mike Yuhan, number yeah. 52. They've got to they've just quit fooling around, both of them, and, and finish the game up here. All right, 331 remaining in the ball game. The Red Tornado's out to a 21-7 lead here in the coal bucket game. Jurassic comes out. Duran goes into the lineup. Uh, it's actually second down at about nine. He gained about one on the play. Klingerman, and Klingerman mm. stopped very quickly down there by the Indians. That looks like Miller getting off the bottom of that pile. It is. Miller had himself one heck of a yes, football game did. tonight. Well, you knew we knew he would. You know what I mean? That going in, we knew he was one of the better guys out there. And Miller, yes. Mike Uha had a great. Yes. Shuga had a great game. Yeah, he's not disappointed us in that respect. No. A little cold, guys. I'm starting to get a little shivery here. How about you giving me a hug now? I don't know about all that. Okie dokie. <laughs> uh, Klinger is 24 rushes for 84 yards. Not a typical night for Mr. Klingerman tonight. Now they'll go in an I formation and a penalty flag, and I believe that's a delay of game. It is. Delay of game. Against the All right, Miller comes off the field for a well-deserved rest. 
Miller's going to wake up tomorrow morning, and there's not going to be a single spot in his body that doesn't hurt somewhere <laughs> along the line from the game he played tonight. All right, a draw play, and it's Klingerman squirts his way free. Klingerman makes a nice move, and Klingerman pulls his way for the first down. He decided that finally that Taylor was, was going to not be able to get around him, so he pulled his way into him, and he picked up the first down. He's in Indian territory now at the Indian 43-yard line, first and 10. The clock continues to click, 2.15. Remaining here in the ball game. Eric Taylor has had himself a good game defensively also. Number yeah. 24 for the Indians. Defensively, they're a solid football yes, team. Yes, they are. But they, they need a little bit of work on offense. They really do. They struggled mightily on offense. And you look at the scoreboard, but remember, 14 of those points came from the Red Tornado defense. So yeah. as yeah. far as offense is concerned, this is a 7-7 football game. Rano goes in motion across there. It's going to be a draw play again, and this time, the draw play is stopped by Hunter Bloom, number 19, who saw that play and said, not again. Again, now the Red Tornado's in no particular hurry. No. It's going to be second down and nine. They will waste as much possible time as they can. The Indians have one timeout remaining. I'm not sure they would have any reason to use it. But again, every time I say that, somebody does that too. I've been doing that for years. Again, an all-out blitz. Klingerman runs right into it. Uh, that was actually 37. Hashuga who ran through the line there and blocked everybody up. Again, give these Indians credit. We're down under a minute here, down two scores, haven't done much on offense, but defensively still fighting as hard as they did at the opening kickoff. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, we wish success to the Smokin Area Indians in their quest for the District 4 Triple-A crown. All right, I formation Bargeman in front of Klingerman. Under 30 seconds to play here. This could be the final play of the game, and it's going to be a keeper mm -hmm. by Farinato, and Farinato goes down hard down there. Field. Number 22 on the stop, Anonia. And uh, let's see, did we call? There's <laughs> Who called the timeout? <laughs> There's that timeout. Who, there you go. Why did you call a timeout now? Why <laughs> would you call a timeout with 19 seconds left and you're down 21-7? Obviously, they never know how cold it is in the stands when they do stuff like that. I'm telling you. Why would you have done that? This is one of those times where I say, I caramba. I wonder if Six. someone was listening and informed Coach Four. Yeah, I'm sure hey, Altamare yeah. said yeah. you're not going to call a timeout. Yeah, once again, like some of you get penalized if you don't use all your timeouts. <laughs> well, you can't take them with you. They don't carry over. Put the punt team on the field. All right, Rano in the kick. Now, now the Indians don't believe he's going to do that, to tell you the truth. They have put nobody back. He does. And again, I, again, why did we <laughs> I give up? The ball will roll dead around the seven-yard line, where it'll be first and ten Rano's Indians from the seven with ten seconds line. remaining. So what did the whole sequence of things do there? I don't know. I have no idea. We, because they had the You didn't put anybody back to catch it. Well, well, you didn't do that. And you have to remember in the, fir the end of the first half, they put the knee down twice, <laughs> you know, to, to end the half. You can, you could argue it if you really wanted to. Go ahead. You, you would have to. Go ahead. You would wait, have wait, wait. to give me a before lot. You, before you go any further, you can argue, but I'm telling you right now, if you lose, we're going to beat the crap out of you before <laughs> you leave there tonight. Well, you I, still want to argue all this? All I would say is you don't. <laughs> Coach Ford didn't put anybody back. You brought everybody. If you can block the punt, pick it up, get in the end zone. There might be five seconds on the clock. You kick the onside or recovery. You throw one to the end zone. What do you think? Verano's not going <laughs> to. Verano hasn't had one blocked in four years. Hey, you got to take a shot. Yost's pass goes incomplete. Actually bounced off of Duran. Duran. Uh, 
leaves us with five seconds left. One more play in the game here. But no, Wayne, I couldn't yes. agree more. Verano's Vran going to fall down before he lets that punt get oh, blocked. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, uh, do we beat him up or not? I'm still trying to figure this uh, out. What's, what's, the, what's the final word I think on this? It was well, well, we should I think ask it was Jose. Well Jose's the fighter. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? He's he finally out. woke up. He's trying to stay out of this whole mess. Oh, okay. I don't blame him. He hasn't had a lot of numbers to calculate today, so it's been a slow day for Jose. It's those minuses that confuse <laughs> him. <laughs> All right, one more play for the Indians. It's a pass formation for them, of course. And he takes a knee. So that's the end of the ball game, folks. That's it. Here at the Silver Bowl, in the cold bucket game, the Red Tornadoes have retained the cold bucket for the 17th time in a row. That seems a little hard to believe in itself, but it, it is true. Uh, it has not gone Shemokin's way for 17 years now, the longest streak, of course, ever in this long-standing uh, trophy game. So, as I said earlier in the, in the broadcast, both teams go to the playoffs. We're going to let you do this. You're going to let me do it? Okay. Luckily, again, we have Jose up here. Uh, Jose is going to hand me, hand me the stats for Mount Carmel rushing the football. 43 attempts for 139 yards. Um, picked up 10 first downs. Uh, Mount Carmel throwing the football. 4 for 12 for 47. On the other side, Shemokin, 30 rushing attempts, picking up 47 yards, um, 5 first downs. Opponents passing 4 of 13 for 76 yards. And actually, let me correct myself, the 139s for Mount Carmel was total. Uh, the 43 rushes for 92 yards, and Chimokin total yardage is 123. Well, there you have it. You can see the uh, bucket being raised down there by the uh, Red Tornado cheerleaders. That's uh, become quite the uh, moment in time for the Red Tornadoes <laughs> as far as the gold bucket's concerned. An interesting game. I, I don't even know if it was an interesting game, just a strange game more than anything else because we were looking at Central Columbia, I believe was losing tonight as we were, as we were talking about it. Danville was beating Seenings Grove, which we pretty much thought was going to happen. Right. Danville would end up as the number one seed in, in the District 4 2A. There are, of course, eight teams uh, in District 4 2A. There's only four in the 3A division, so it will be interesting. This team will have Wasileski back. He will be back next week and be ready to play again. Uh, so... Does that mean that this offense goes back to being a 400-yard offense? I don't know. You don't know. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't well, you know, Clearman, since he <laughs> was hurt, has not come back to par of what he was doing in the first six games. So I, I think right there in itself, you not only have you lost a half or a quarterback who could run the ball for you, especially when he gets into some trouble, but now Klingerman's got to get his, uh, his, his cleats back yeah, on his again back, yeah. And, and, yeah. and start running the way he did at the beginning of the season. Certainly. I think especially um, just to go back to tonight's game, what you saw from Farinato in the second half <coughs> excuse me, was more of what I had expected to see from him, much more of a game manager type role right? Um, versus <coughs> – oh, my goodness, I apologize um, – versus – trying to create something on his own. Um, you got the, the ball into the hands of some of the Red Tornado running backs and really pounded the rock, ate up a lot of clock, moved down the field, and finally got an offensive touchdown. Pounded the rock. Yeah. Did he say that? He did. I did. Uh, was did. that on air, Brianna? Did he actually – people hear that, Brianna? We wanna, I want to do mention that Brianna <laughs> is back. Yes. Uh, she missed, uh, of course, the injury in soccer. And we missed her. She was back last week, actually, at, at Sunnings Grove. Uh, you weren't on the but camera. But we did not right? see her. Yeah, she was not on the camera yep. uh, last week. But she's back in her normal position again, and that always makes us feel better because we need direction, and she's able to give that to <laughs> us. Oh. Because otherwise we just run a muck with scissors up here. So we're going to we're gonna bring it into this thing because I, I really don't know what I could talk about I any longer. Either. I mean, it's just like it's like you want to go home and just reflect on and wonder <laughs> what anybody did in this game today. <laughs> the, truth. the Indians, of course – uh, another law and another loss that that can be, you know, if you look at their season, this is par for the course for yeah. them. Drop the ball a lot, put the ball on the ground a lot, put the rock on the ball <laughs> on the ground a lot. Put the rock on the, the ball. Rock on the ball. Okay, <laughs> you know, but again, that's not nothing new for them. They had they had terrible field position, and they then compounded that terrible field position by letting the ball hit the ground a lot. Sure. So they're, you know, again, game ten hasn't changed much for them either. Uh, they need to look at that very hard. 
you know, when they, lo when they uh, look at their next game, probably Sydney's Grove. So they got some work to do, too. But it's the playoffs. Anything can happen. No, for definitely. anybody, From anybody from here on in, anything can happen. So we wish them luck. Uh, you know, we don't see them anymore this season, so we wish them lots of luck in, the, in that uh, 3A division. And if that 3A division is a wide-open yep, division, there's no is. two ways about it. I, I mean, it's odd that you go in at 2-8, and eight, but it's a wide-open division, so we'll wait and see what happens there. We're going to sign off from a chilly uh, Silver Bowl for the last time in yes, 2012. We're the final the game for these seniors played their final game on the, on the uh, turf here tonight. And... Uh, We'll call it a night and see everybody probably in Athens. We probably have to leave Tuesday morning to get there, so <laughs> really early. I am Warren Altamore. Jim Lesko. And Wayne Brokenshire. This has been a sports presentation of WKMC-TV, the broadcast arm of Mount Carmel Area High School. Good night. <laughs>